people. You look so good. We love that you're tuning into our favorite streaming channel. It's Today All Day. I know. I was just telling the crew because they're all chit-chatting over there. Yeah. It's time for Today All Day, you guys. It's a big deal. Get excited. Oh, they're so excited. <laughs> um, we're halfway through the week. Yep. We're here in the studio. You're watching our digital yeah. show. Did you know that? Today in 30, and we've got another packed half hour for you. All right, first we're going to start off with a report from Richard Engel in Afghanistan. He's got the very latest on that scramble to get Americans and American allies out of that country. And then just weeks before her liftoff, we talked to a member of the first all-civilian space mission, Haley Arsenault. She conquered cancer at a young age. Well, she's getting ready to make history. Plus, wait until you see what happened when a few of us took over a kid's summer camp Thankfully, just for one day. And it's Wednesday, so in the fourth hour, it's Trends Day Wednesday. Wednesday. It's Trends Day Wednesday. We're going to break down all the hot topics for you. So let's hit play because it's time for... Do you remember when it was Wines Day Wednesday? Yeah, I liked Wines Day. I miss the wine. All right. Okay. Today in 30. Today in 30. <laughs> We'll start in Kabul with NBC's Richard Engel. Richard, good morning. Uh, good morning, Savannah. A surprising admission from the Taliban, one of their top leaders just today telling NBC News that even they were surprised that Kabul fell so quickly, that they didn't have the resources in place to take the city, but they took the city nonetheless. And here from this very base, the evacuation of Americans and American contractors and foreign contractors is now moving along very quickly. We made it onto the military side of Kabul airport, the last place in Afghanistan where the American flag still flies. Here is where the United States is overseeing an elaborate evacuation from the country. This has become effectively the last U.S. military base in Afghanistan, the last presence of American troops in this country after 20 years. And they're only focused on one thing, wrapping it up. The evacuation is mostly focused on airlifting Americans and other foreign nationals, and Afghans who managed to obtain visas and who are happy to leave. Peace. Two days ago, it looked very different here. This side of the airport was overwhelmed when thousands of Afghans stormed the runways, cramming onto commercial planes, which got so full, pilots wouldn't take off. They scrambled to board American military transport jets, clinging on as they taxied for takeoff. Afghan media reports several people have fallen to their deaths as they tried to hold on to aircraft in flight. I spoke to a group of Afghans who all worked on this base for years, earning around $500 a month to be cleaners and cooks. Not one has obtained a visa. And what would happen to you or you or you if you go back home? Are you worried for your safety? Absolutely. You know, uh, before a few days, now Taliban searching the homes. If you go outside, of course they will kill us. What bothers them isn't just the lack of action, but the lack of concern. This is the first time that somebody ask about our lives. Nobody before come to ask what's your problem, what your prob uh, family have up in dangerous or no, no nobody. So this us yeah, this talking is the, to you? This, this is the first time. We told some Americans, please give me the recommendation letter so they say, oh, no, sorry. Just outside the airport, there are still many Afghans pushing to get in, including many women begging to get out of the country so they don't have to live under the Taliban. As overnight, Afghanistan's new presumptive leader arrived in Kandahar, driving through the Islamist stronghold in a protected convoy. The Taliban now in charge are promising to protect human rights, including for women. But do they mean it? When a reporter from Vice News asked Taliban fighters their opinion on women in politics, the idea seemed laughable. <laughs> And just, and just this morning, a State Department official met with the workers on this base, the Afghan local nationals, and told them that they are going to work on bringing their families onto this base and getting both them and their families out of the country. Savannah. Richard, you've obviously covered this country for many, many years. What has this latest crisis been like on the ground? How are people there in Afghanistan reacting to the beginning of Taliban rule? So most people are afraid. Some people are trying to leave their homes. Most are just staying inside. But we are seeing for the first time 
a bit of resistance, perhaps the Taliban showing their true colors. There has been uh, yesterday a very small demonstration of some very brave Afghan women demanding their rights. And then earlier today, some Afghans in the city of Jalalabad brought out the old Afghan flag and they were saying, this is our flag and we support it. We don't want the white Taliban flag. But according to witnesses, as they were holding that small demonstration, the Taliban drove by in a vehicle, opened fire on the demonstrators, and according to witnesses, killed at least three of those demonstrators. Wow. Just speaks to their courage, Richard. Thank you very much. We want to turn now to Dr. Richard Besser, the former acting director of the CDC, now president of the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. Doctor, good morning. Good to see you. Good to see you, Savannah. So the CDC is expected to present its case for a third booster shot. What in your mind is driving this concern that the protection from these vaccines, the Pfizer and the Moderna, wanes over time? You know, Savannah, I, I think there's there's probably two things we're going to hear about. One is uh, the the most dire concern, and that would be if they're starting to see an increased risk of severe infection, hospitalization, or or death. Now, in Israel, as 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 Dr. Collins was saying uh, over the weekend, they are seeing an increased risk of of severe infection, and and that was what CDC has been watching for the most. The other piece of it, though, and I think they'll address this as well, is that we are seeing widespread trans transmission of Delta around the country, and we are seeing a significant number of breakthrough infections. Um, clearly, the vaccine reduces dramatically your risk of, of having any infection. Um, but if we want to get this Delta variant under control, and if we are seeing a number of people who are fully vaccinated getting infected, uh, a booster shot could help with that. But to be clear right now, that booster shot would be the exact same shot that those of us who've had the Pfizer or Moderna have already received. In other words, it's not yet tailored to the Delta variant. Exactly. And, and the expectation is that they're going to recommend that people get the same vaccine that they received for their primary series of, 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 of two shots. But they'll lay that out today as to why. But it is not a new vaccine. It is one of the vaccines that's already been authorized by the FDA. Let's talk about breakthrough infections, because we know from talking to experts like you over these last few months that the vaccines were never promised to say you wouldn't get infected at all. They're supposed to stop you from getting really sick or from dying. The New York Times is reporting that breakthrough infections in fully vaccinated people actually have accounted for 12 to 24 percent of hospitalizations in the six states that they looked at. How concerning is that? Well, that's what I was talking about before. So it, if in terms of breakthrough infections, it's it's largely or exclusively either mild or infections or infections with no symptoms at all, that would be a different story. But if we're starting to see people who are fully vaccinated be hospitalized, that's a reason to, to go for, for boosters. In particular, if they're seeing increased hospitalization or increased severe infection among those groups that have already shown that they're at the greatest risk, mm -hmm. uh, the elderly, people who are in nursing homes, uh, people with certain medical conditions, um, that's another reason why it's important to get get boosters. And this is is something that's seen for other infections as well. We we all get a flu a flu shot each year, and and part of that is because of the need for a boosting effect. Yeah, that was my I was going to ask you a quick final thought because you do wonder if this is going to increase vaccine hesitancy and skeptic, skepticism. I mean, on the one hand, it's pretty straightforward. We get booster shots all the time for the flu shot. But on the other hand, are people going to say, "Aha! First you said two shots. Now you say three. What is this all about?" Can you be trusted? Yeah, you know, I, I, I hope not. If you look at who's hospitalized and who's dying, uh, the vast majority, 90 percent for hospitalizations, higher in many places, 99 plus percent of people who are dying are people who are unvaccinated. It is the best way to protect your health and the health of those around you. Uh, but Savannah, the, 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 my last thought is that if we don't do more as a nation to provide vaccine around the globe, uh, we are going to be continuing to face COVID and new variants uh, for the indefinite future. We are at risk as long as there's widespread global transmission of COVID. Uh -oh. Good point, um, and maybe one for discussion later because uh, it's really an important one. Dr. Besser, thank you so much. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope, the COVID vaccines. I know, I know, it's been a little confusing. Like really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. 
plan your vaccine. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? What are the issues that the party stands for? That seems to be the missing piece here. If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope. The COVID vaccines. I know, I know. It's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So... It's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. We're back with our season-long series, Summer on Today. You know, kids say there's no place like summer camp, and we couldn't agree more. So we decided to pull off a Today Summer Camp Takeover. Now, Savannah, you had already flown to Tokyo, so you missed this assignment. Uh, Craig, Carson, Al, and I got to be camp counselors for a day. It happened at Asphalt Green right here in New York City, uh, leading kids in our favorite activities so we could have some fun in the sun, too. was a camp counselor at a summer camp and I loved every second of it. I think I'm gonna be a good camp counselor because I understand kids, because I'm a big kid. I wouldn't say that I'm going to be the best camp counselor. In fact, I'm probably going to be the most mediocre, but I'm gonna have the most fun. It's not about being the best, it's about making sure you're doing it for the kids. That said, I'm the best, because I'm the loudest. All right, let's get started. So when I was in high school, uh -huh, I played basketball and I used to dream about it. Do you like basketball? How much? So much! How much? So much! I want my kids to be loud. I want them to be the loudest at camp because of course the kids at Camp Hoda are gonna have the most fun. Basketball! Oh, you guys know how to dribble? You guys got skills. Nice! Off the backboard. Game on, baby. All the way. Dribble, dribble. Pass it down. Up. Oh, the blue team stole it. Uh oh. Uh oh. It's a race to the basket. Red team's got it. No pushing. Okay. You got to bounce it. He's going up for it. Oh. Okay. Let him shoot. Yeah. The blue team has one and the red team has one. And this is where the game is ending, and I'll tell you why. What's the most important part? Raise your hand if you've ever done the potato sack race. And right, I'm going to demonstrate. We just hop. And we hop. And whoever hops the fastest to the end wins. Get in your sacks. Campers, are you ready for the potato sack race? On your mark, get set. Let's see. Oh, ooh, we lost two. Oh, we lost three. And you're the winner. Yeah, the lesson that I'm, I'm really going to try and, and leave them with is winning is easy. Losing's hard. No participation trophies here, kids. You can't go easy on the kids. I'm going to toughen them up. I want you to pick a team. You pick a team. Oh, it's going to be like this. Okay. If I have my way, you're going to lose a lot. Nothing builds up a child like tearing them down. Tug of war. Oh, these kids are strong. Come on, campers. Ah, come on. Welcome to Science Lab. Give yourself a round of applause. Come on, kids. I love science. Science was my favorite subject in school because it was so fun. We're going to make elephant toothpaste. Safety first, right, kids? Do you have goggles? Do we have goggles? Step one, we're going to take our hydrogen peroxide and we're going to pour it in this cylinder here. We're going to make our elephant toothpaste blue today. Should I put more in? You want more blue? Yeah. Come on, I can't hear you. Yeah. All right, more blue. Let's shake it up. Ooh, look, guys. Should I drink? Take a sip? 
No. This is the yeast. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Three, three yeah. two, one. one. Hey. Watch that. Woo In three, two, one. Pour it and yeah. It's that much better when it's fun to learn. I think kids want to make learning fun. You all look a little hot. Are you ready to get cooled off? Yeah! All right. Well, we're going to do a little relay race. I like water slide races because you get to run with reckless abandon and you get to get wet. And, and it's the one time where adults aren't saying, stop running. No, it's run, get wet. All right, and they're in the slip and slide. They're running through. Oh, he's sliding. She's showing incredible grit. She went down, but she's back up. Yes, and through. Woo, yeah. You guys were fantastic. Give yourselves a hand. Who wants to go on the big slip and slide? This is just like being at my house. Nobody listens. Hey, guys. Water slides open, come on! I hope that my campers leave camp with a, a sense of togetherness. Because you know you've done your job. If the kids wake up tomorrow and go, man, I can't wait to get back to camp. This is like a dream time for kids. Summer camp's where it's at, baby. That's so good. That was that adorable. Was, that, was really, that was really fun. And that maybe the kids with Craig, not so much. Yeah. <laughs> Sergeant, wow. he's not having it. Yeah. Woo. That could be the next Today Show franchise. Yeah. There you Gay go. Summer camp. Summer yeah, camp. Except Craig's was kind of like Shawshank Redemption. Yeah. <laughs> Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends of today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day Kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? What are the issues that the party stands for? That seems to be the missing piece here. If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Let's go. And good evening from New Orleans. There is breaking news. There you go. All right, I've asked so many questions already since the commercial break. It's not often you get to live out two childhood dreams. 29-year-old Haley Arsenault is about to do that. At age 10, Haley was diagnosed with bone cancer and treated at St. Jude Children's Hospital, Children's Research Hospital. She dreamed of one day working there, and now she's a physician's assistant at St. Jude. Now her other dream is even bigger to go to space. And in less than a month, she'll be on the first all-civilian trip into Earth's orbit. Billionaire Jared Isaacman is sponsoring the SpaceX launch to raise awareness and raise money to fight childhood cancer. Haley, thanks for staying around. Good morning. Good morning. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you, guys. We are thrilled having you. So so the official crew has been set uh, since March. What? How vigorous has the training been? What are some of the things you guys have been doing? 
It's really been ramping up in intensity. So as soon as the whole crew was announced, we went straight to Pennsylvania and did centrifuge training mm. to get our bodies accustomed to the G-forces that we're gonna feel with launch and reentry. Mm. And since then, it's been a lot of studying, a lot of time in the simulator, and did, doing really cool things too. We did a zero gravity flight and got to experience weightlessness for the first time. We did some water survival training, hypoxia training, just mm. all the, the quintessential astronaut training. And it's been like all these once in a lifetime experiences packed into one year. It's been the best. Mm. <laughs> well, I, I was asking you so many questions, you know, just about how you're not nervous to do this. And you <laughs> seem so ready. You seem, you know, like the whole team is ready. But I, I imagine chemistry is a big thing. And I know you guys went on kind of a, a survival mission to Mount Rainier in, in Washington. What was that like for all of you? And that was one of the first things that we did mm -hmm. to get us comfortable being uncomfortable, as our commander put it. That's interesting. It was, and so we camped on this mountain together for three days. We hiked for 10 hours on the first day, straight mm. up the mountain. <laughs> and we learned a lot about ourselves and each other, and and it made us even more confident in that chemistry of our crew. We get along so well. So you told me you put on the, the space suit. Did that, is that what made it feel real? And then have you seen the spacecraft yet? There's been so many moments that have made it feel real, but when I got to put on my spacesuit two weeks ago, I was like, yep, I'm an astronaut. I am going to space. This is oh happening. My goodness. And then I actually got to see our Falcon 9 rocket. What was that like? Oh, it was so exciting. It was bigger than I imagined. Even mm -hmm. though I've seen it a couple of times, I haven't seen ours, and it's huge, and we got to sign it in oh, the fun. soot because oh, wow. it's been used a couple Look at times. That. Oh, okay, there you go. Yes, yeah, so the beauty of SpaceX is they're making this reusable right. technology, and so this rocket's been to space. It's got soot, and we got to sign our names in the soot. So it knows oh, what wow. it's doing. It knows what it's <laughs> doing. Like it, know, it knows the way. <laughs> it does. The you know, it's amazing. Uh, what, uh, unlike the, the last couple of missions we've heard about where they up and then back down again, mm. you're going to be up there for three three days, which is just mind-blowing. What, what are you most excited about, and, and what have you, how have you packed for this? <laughs> uh, I'm so excited about all the different aspects. I mean, getting to see Earth from space mm. is supposed to be this life-changing moment. I'm gonna love living in zero gravity for three days, but what I'm mm. most excited about is we're gonna call the St. Jude patients from space. Uh -huh. mm. These kids that I've gotten to treat, these brave kids, and you know, kids are so visual, it will actually show them what their future can look Absolutely. like. Absolutely. Somebody who's been in their same shoes. And so that's what I'm most excited about. And as far as packing, now that took months. <laughs> and I finally turned in my packing. Um, there are no travel blogs online about how to pack for space because <laughs> yeah. yeah. I looked. Um, but I, I've gotten some mementos together that mean a lot to me. Mm -hmm. oh, that's terrific. And when you talk to uh, St. Jude's, St. Jude patients and when you send a video to them, what is your message going to be? Have you already thought about what, what you want to say or are you kind of waiting for this experience to happen to then, you know, instill that message to them? I think both, you know, and I'll know in the moment what to say, but I really just want to pass on the message of simple. I, if, if I did this, you can do this. Mm. And to hold on to hope that there will be better days, mm. that the hair will grow back and you're going to feel better and you can grow up and accomplish your dreams. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. And did the kids give you any advice? They, the kids actually gave me a lot of advice about aliens. Aliens? Oh, what was that? So um, they were very concerned that I would meet some aliens up there. <laughs> and one of them said, if there's an alien that gets in our spacecraft, that will go home, I'll put a sign on my pantry that says, aliens eat here. <laughs> and then the aliens will go in there and I can lock them in the door and there you go. Boom. take care That's of it. That's a really good oh, idea. I was Very like, you thought ass. about this. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. That's impressive. And we're out of time, but really quickly, what is this thing about space beer? So we're flying some hops to space. You really like, are. Hops, and we're gonna later auction them for St. Jude. Ooh. And so anyone can drink beer that's flown in space. That's but fun. we're doing so many things to raise mm -hmm. our $200 million for St. Jude. Mm -hmm. I want to invite everyone to go to stjude.org slash inspiration for. They oh, will do that. All right, Haley, thank Haley. you so much. And, and hopefully you'll be bringing beer that's out of this world. Back. Oh, but <laughs> that was good. Welcome everybody. Today in 30 on Today All Day. We are back, Trends Day Wednesday. We're talking about J-Lo. She just scrubbed A-Rod right off her Instagram. Find out if he did the same. Tune in. Good morning, welcome to Today. Start your day with us every morning. Get your daily dose of news on the go with the Today Podcast. <laughs> and stream today anytime you want. Today, all day. Every day. Wherever you are, today is there. Let's go. And good evening from New Orleans, there is breaking news. Good 
good morning. Welcome to Today. Start your day with us every morning. Get your daily dose of news on the go with the Today podcast. <laughs> Boom. Boom. And stream today anytime you want. Today, all day. Every day. Wherever you are, today is there. The Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Hey guys, welcome today. So happy you're joining us. The U.S. swimming star Katie Ledecky in the house. Eddie, come on out. You're making me cry. This is an incredible moment. Join us every morning on Today. The Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast, free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. It's only been a few weeks, but it feels like it's been forever since we've seen our pal Justin Sylvester. Look, Where's he been? I was gone, and now I'm back, and now he's back, <laughs> and I'm just happy. Live from the Daily Pop Studio in L.A. with the Trends Day Wednesday scoop, Justin, hey! You know, Hoda, I, I, it's a sad day for me. It's a sad day for me. Why? You ranked a Thin Mint third in line <laughs> for Girl Scout cookies. How dare you? What, what How about, dare you? What about the Samoa? I don't love a Samoa. Samoa I don't love a Samoa. A Samoa goes third after a Thin Mint and a shortbread. Jenna, am I right? Yeah, but I. But what about the what about the tag along? The tag along is the good. The tag alongs are for guests. <laughs> Oh, I love a tag along. I love, I okay, love. wait, Justin. We people have been watching TV like crazy. You haven't been around. We don't know what to watch. Yeah, although I us. have been watching the White Lotus. You guys, the White Lotus finale was last weekend, and in typical HBO series fashion, spoiler alert, it ended with a rich person murdering somebody else. Okay, because HBO really loves that theme. Now, if you're looking for the next juicy show to watch, yes. I have it for you. Are you ready? Ready. It's called Nine Perfect Strangers on Hulu. The first three episodes are out today, so you don't have to wait. And it's set at a not-so-tranquil retreat where nine unsuspecting strangers are taken deeper than they could ever imagine. What? Now, Nicole Kidman is running the place with a Russian accent, and she is serving me Amityville horror hot yoga realness. Does that make sense? <laughs> so it's a horror thing? It's Okay, it's a psychological thriller mixed with a deep dive in character. It stars Melissa McCarthy and Regina Hall. It's going to be amazing. And guess what? 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 Nicole Kidman admitted, because, you know, she never really talks about her marriage. Nicole Kidman admitted that Keith Urban loved this character so much, he would make her bring it home with him. Oh. You know, if you know what I mean. Oh, you got that mm -hmm. information. All right, let's talk about Barbara Streisand, because when I hit Google, she came up with a lot of news hits. <laughs> Well, you can add critic to Barbara Streisand's <laughs> resume because she went on an Australian show called The Project, and she was asked about the most recent iteration of A Star is Born. You know, mm -hmm. she starred in the 1976 remake. Well, she said when she heard that they were going to make another version, it was originally supposed to star, get this, Beyonce and Will Smith, which she thought was a great idea. Yeah. First of all, can someone tell Barbara this movie came out three years ago? <laughs> We've had two presidents and a pandemic since then. If she would have gave us this information earlier, yes. we could have got the beehive on the case. But yes. what did she say about Gaga, that she thought she was fine? She thought it was okay yeah. and it wasn't original, but oh. she loved the idea of oh. having Beyonce. Okay. But let's be real. They couldn't afford Beyonce. The fan <laughs> budget alone would to be, have her hair but blowing the, in the whole I, you know movie would have been. I have been. to say, and I don't, I don't like to disagree with Barbara Streisand because she knows what yeah. she's talking about. But that chemistry, I love. That I mean, was how hot. many yes. times no, did we watch was the a, shallow a, a, Oscar over performance? and over? My husband had to I'm turn sweating. off my yeah. <laughs> computer. Sweating just thinking about it. Right. All right. Wait. You got to tell us about some. What we have some celebrity couple news. news? You guys, J-Lo has gone full made in Manhattan. She wiped her entire Instagram clean of A-Rod. Now, 
Personally, I think it's okay to archive a photo here and there, <laughs> but she went full crime scene cleanup. <laughs> there is no trace, nowhere of Alex Rodriguez. I mean, Dateline couldn't even find a <laughs> fingerprint if they tried, okay? <laughs> oh my god. No gosh. Dateline prints on that. All, All right. right. Thank you, Thanks, Justin. Justin. We're so happy you're you back. We love one. you. Okay, you can catch mm -hmm. Justin Weekdays on Daily Pop, our sister network, E. Well, we hope you'll come back tomorrow. We've got another great morning plan for you on today, including Hugh Jackman. Mm -hmm. Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman and get ready to shop with Jill Martin. You guys have a great day. We'll see you all tomorrow. Welcome to Today All Day. I am so excited to share some of my favorite stories with you. I've interviewed so many empowering change makers, amazing moms, and even a few of my own family members through the years. I hope you enjoy these stories as much as I do and learn a little something along the way. Now looking back, he's won eight Grammys, millions of albums sold, inducted into the Hollywood Walk of Fame. But do you still have pinch me moments? Like, I can't believe this is my son. No, I, I, I don't say I can't believe it, because I saw the passion back then. To see him doing the things that, that he's doing now, you know, he has influenced an entire generation of R&B and pop artists. He is iconic. And I know where that came from. It's in his heart. It's his true passion. He can do anything. Hi, everybody. I know I say this every time, but I mean it every time. I can't wait to introduce you to my new favorite mom. Her son is one of the best-selling artists of all time. He's won eight Grammys, gazillions of number one hits. You'll know as soon as you see her with her smile. So let's let this mom into the room, into our Zoom room. Janetta. Hi. How are you? I'm wonderful. Tell us the names and ages of your two sons. Um, and they always get on me about that. Mom, she doesn't even remember her, our ages. <laughs> Usher's 43 and James is 36. Take me back to some of the, those early years, because a lot of us, like I said, we learn from you guys. Tell me what those early years were like. I remember the day he was born and I would say, oh my, he's so beautiful. She was like, stop saying that. It sounds a little conceited. <laughs> I was like, but he is, he's so special. And, you know, he really was special. Same thing with James. With both of my kids, um, there were times that it was very tough, but I had family, you know, to assist me. Uh, I was a single mom, but had the best job. So that's what I knew, to take care of your kids and give them the best. What advice would you give to single parents who are listening to you right now, who are in the thick of it now as you were at that time where you're on your own, you're working, especially, you know, you're trying to manage two growing boys. What did you do right? And was there anything you would do differently? I wouldn't do anything different. You know, they always had a very nice place to stay. Uh, they always had food to eat, even when it was me because I was a working parent. So what I say to other parents is, you have to turn a negative into a positive. People will say problems. No, it's not, it's not a problem, it's a situation. You just have to figure it out. Would you say you were a strict mom? Were you laid back? How, how would you describe no, your- No, I, I was very strict. No, I was very, very strict. My kids would tell you that. Can you think of an, of an example of when you were strict? You know, it would be just taking the personal things that they truly, truly loved. But I have to tell you, um, and this used to annoy me like so so much. You could take things away from Usher, but it was like, well, she's gonna give it back. She's gonna <laughs> give it back. You know, so it was like a punishment to him was like, look, I'm tired of punishing you. I am tired of punishing you. Could you please not do that? You know, he was just that kid that wanted to do what he wanted to do. So oh, she's gonna take it away, but she's gonna give it back. <laughs> How was music a part of Usher and James's childhood? You know, he sang in my choir. I was the youth choir director. So I knew he could sing. I knew that for a fact, but I never thought he would be the global superstar that he is today. 
I just knew he could sing. But he met this group and he just, he was very persistent. You know, he really wanted to, to sing in this group. So I said, okay, that's fine. I'll, I'll let you participate. That's when I really realized that this kid right here is truly talented. But when I decided to pull him out of the, the group, we are here in Atlanta. There are bigger opportunities here. And so I began to enter him into competitions after I pulled him out of that group, which he told me, you have destroyed my life. You have destroyed my world. And can you imagine how heartbroken I was? Because I knew it was not a good situation for him. I knew that. And um, it was really hard. It was hard. When you pulled him out of that group, how long was it before Usher was able to know and you were able to know in your heart that as a mom, you made the right decision? Let me tell you something. God is good because it happened overnight. Literally? I promise you, I promise you. In three months time, from the time I took him out that group to the time that he signed his deal, he was on Star Search and had a record deal. That's amazing. And you managed a career for 17 years. Those, you know, how did you balance being a mom and a manager? It really was easy because you, you are a parent all the time. But as a manager, you have to put on a different hat. I remember I used to put on different hats. Literally? I did. I used to put on different hats. Like today, I will knock you out. <laughs> because I'm the mom, but today I don't have the hat on, so I'm managing you. <laughs> but no, really, you're always the mom. I receive letters a lot from moms that are managing their kids and they want advice. And I always say, stay with your kid. I don't care what they say because they tried to push me out. They didn't want me in. They would actually say, you know, you're too close to the project. No, I'm not. Because remember, Usher went to stay with Puffy. Now that was a business decision right there because I didn't know Puffy. I didn't know him. How old was he? Usher was 15. He lost his voice. Physically or just, you know, puberty. Oh. He's growing and he lost his voice. So he lost his range. So the record company felt like, okay, this is not a great investment. So Puffy was there and I will never forget it. We had this conversation and he said, you're going to have to trust me. That was really, really a hard decision. Even though you don't manage him anymore, does he still come to you for advice sometimes or how? Oh, all the time. Yeah. I mean, you know, after 17 years, after all the great accomplishments and so forth, you know, Usher wanted to do his own thing. I applaud that. He needed to, because at some point in time, you have to let them fly. I was still there. He could always pick up the phone, call me, because I would tell him the truth. That was bad performance. That was, that was not a good performance, not at all. We need to fix this, that, and the other. I still continue to do that. And I still do that to this day. He'll wait on my phone call. How did I do? things don't we see when it comes to the work that he's put in over these 29 or plus years? He's so passionate. He really is a loving and a giving person. When you really got to really see who Usher really was, was on The Voice. He's approachable. He's real. So I, to me, people really got to see the personal side of him on The Voice. Do you have a favorite Usher song? I don't really, I love the Confessions record. These are my confessions, that one. Yeah, I love the <laughs> Confessions project. <laughs> what does that feel like when we're all singing the words to your son's music that span a decade, if not more? What does that feel like as a mom? He is an iconic figure in popular music history. That feels so good. Do you get nervous for him? All the time, all the time still, I'm like, but I know he's gonna deliver because I know him. He's great every time. He's so talented, I mean, across the board. And I'm so proud of him.
Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. What does it feel like as a mom to see your child performing and people screaming and cheering and knowing every word? Like, what does that feel like? It is crazy. Like, I remember being at one of his first big stadium type shows and I'm like, screaming like a fan, you know? <laughs> But then you look around and it's like all these people are here listening to your child. It, it's a crazy, very surreal feeling. And I know that word is used a lot, but it really is. You just kind of are like, this is crazy. How did this happen? Hi, everybody. This is a special Through Mom's Eyes because this is our first country singer's mom. Thomas Rhett has sold out concert venues all over the world. He has more number one hits than we can count and so many awards, including the prestigious ACM Entertainer of the Year Award. Today, we get to hear from the woman who knows him best, his mom, Paige. All right, so this is my famous bomb blind date. I get to knock on the door. Here we go. Knock, knock, knock. Yes, can you hear me? Hi, how are you? I'm so good, thanks for having me. Take us back, tell me the names and ages of all three of your kiddos. Okay, Thomas Rhett is 30, and then I have Casey who's 26, and then I have Tyler who is only 15. <laughs> oh wow, so you've got a good yeah. little gap there. Yes, two it's different dads, but uh, yeah, we have a good gap there. So I'm living with grandkids plus one in high school. So first of all, you say Thomas Rhett for years. I thought Thomas was his first name and Rhett was his last name. And then when I saw his Instagram, you know, and I learned more about him, I'm like, oh, Thomas Rhett is his name. <laughs> yeah. Back 30 years ago, when we were trying to come up with a name, my husband at the time, Rhett, his dad, we could not, we couldn't agree. So we were being from the South, we were like Thomas Rhett. I love it. And the rest is history. So take me back to those early years when they were young. What were those years like for you? Okay, so Rhett, his dad, was a country singer back in the 90s. When we first moved to Nashville and he took off on the road, my daughter, Casey, was like six weeks old. Thomas Rhett was four. You know, it was, it was kind of crazy. And we would go out on the road, some with Rhett, but to me, that was harder than just staying at home with them and doing it by myself. So tell me, I know you and I'm also a product of divorce early on, but you and your husband divorced uh, when the kids were young. Any advice to other moms out there who are going through a divorce with young children? Yeah, don't ever bad mouth your ex because that is their father and you married him for a reason. They have some good in them. So just keep all that to yourself. And we were both very good at that. And I think my kids, you know, they came through it, but we've always kept it amicable. And like, even now, I mean, we spend Christmas together and go on ski trips and to the beach. And if you create problems there, it creates problems for your kids. That is such wonderful advice. 
Thomas Redd has said that the way he views his life and his morals and all of that is because of you and what you instilled in him as a child. As a mom, that must feel so good to hear. Because I'm sure there are days when you're thinking, did I do this right? Well, I mean, I tear up and cry just about every time I hear it, you know, because, you know, it does make you feel really good that, you know, when you're doing it, when you're in the midst of it, you're like, oh, what am I doing? And it's never just one person. I mean, you surround your kids by good people and they will eventually become good people. And that's, that's the goal. <laughs> Let's talk about sibling dynamics for a moment. Were Thomas and Casey, were they close growing up? And then how did you foster their unique gifts? Thomas Rhett sang a lot when he was little, but then when he got into high school, I mean, he was like normal kid, football, soccer, you know, into the girls. And then Casey the same. So all through high school, it wasn't like I had to make her feel special because he was in the spotlight. But I will say as this has progressed, I do always work because people are always like, oh, what's it like to be Thomas Rhett's mom? And I'm like, it's amazing. And it's amazing to be Casey's mom. And it's amazing to be Tyler's mom. And I just try to make big over everything that all three of them do. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our yes, show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope, the COVID vaccines. I know, I know, it's been a little confusing. Like really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you what you must know. The biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Good morning. Welcome to Today. Start your day with us every morning. Get your daily dose of news on the go with the Today Podcast. <laughs> and stream today anytime you want. Today, all day. Every day. Wherever you are, today is there. Did he always want to be a musician? I mean, obviously music was a big part of his childhood. Oh yeah, I mean, Rhett was always playing the guitar, singing songs, so he was he was surrounded by that all of the time. And so he just loved to perform. Then he goes off, or was he gonna go to college? I guess going forward, yeah, he did ago? go to college. He told you, and then, so then how did it work? Did he call you and say, Mama, I want to drop out? Yes, yeah, so he came home and he said, you need to sit down for this one. And I was like, what? And he said, I'm gonna drop out of school and sign this writing deal. And I was like, no, we're not gonna do that. You only have like a year and a half left. I even went and met with the publisher, the guy who was signing him. And to this day, he's like, I've never had a mom sit across from me. <laughs> and I was like, listen, I do not want him to drop out of college. So you better like, this better be worth it. You know, <laughs> that sort of thing. Yeah. And then from there, he got offered record deals and, you know, the rest is kind of history. Famous Thomas Rhett song that's your favorite? Oh, man, that's a hard one. Uh, the new song that just came out, What's Your Country Song? That one's really good. Everybody got a small town anthem. Everybody got a story too. But I also love the um, one he did with Chris Tomlin. Thank you, Lord. Oh, that one's awesome. For my mama, for my friends, for your love and 
has been the craziest part of this ride or a pinch me moment for you as a mom? Probably when he won Entertainer of the Year, but I'm going to have to say, you know, a good second to that is he won an award with CMT and Kane Brown's, one of his mm -hmm. band members had just passed away. I'll get emotional still talking about this, but mm -hmm. he got on that stage and prayed. I don't know if this is very conventional, but can I just pray really fast? Is that okay with everybody? Uh, Father God, loss is something that we can't comprehend. That was something that a lot of people would not have done. Yeah. But I said, did you know you were going to do that? He said, well, I went to the bathroom before and I was just like, I got to pray. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so it just kind of hit him and he came out there and, and did it. And that moment to me was just like, this is it. So I want to end by just talking a little bit about the family life. You know, he's married to your daughter-in-law, Lauren. I mean, it's just all the sweet songs Thomas Rhett writes for Lauren. I mean, did you always know that she was the one for him? Absolutely. So they dated a little bit when they were freshmen, and then she broke his heart, and he was dramatic, let me just tell you. <laughs> and uh, then they both went on to date amazing people the rest of high school and even into college. But Thomas Rhett and Lauren were always best friends. And when they both ended up broken up from the people that they had dated all the way through high school and college, you know, basically he knew, Tom Shrett knew, and, and Lauren did not know that she loved him until they kissed. And then from that moment, it was probably six months before they got engaged. Thomas Shrett is who he is because of Lauren. Mm -hmm. And Lauren is who she is because of Thomas Shrett. When do you have a moment where you go, you know what? This is all good. It's all gonna be okay. And he's living his purpose. Like, did you ever have an exhale like, okay? Yes. I think when they came home with Willa Gray and I saw the way he interacted with her and then them having Ada and the way he is as a dad, to me, that <laughs> that's the part where I'm like, he's good. He is a good kid. He gets it. He knows how to do all this. Those moments really make you go, okay, I did something right. <laughs> Thomas and Lauren were very vocal this summer about judgment that they sometimes receive uh, and being, you know, told that they're incapable of raising a black child or a black daughter as white parents, what have you. And it was so admirable. And I know it must have been difficult for both for both of them to speak up, but they did. What was that like for for you and, and just for your family? I was just very proud of the way that they handled everything because you can, I mean, social media, you know, you might have 500 comments that are awesome. And then that one little comment that it just breaks your heart. And it's like, no, you don't know us. Like, mm -hmm. like we love people. We just love mm -hmm. people. What's your biggest advice to parents? Is to not wish it away. You know, when they're little and you're in the throw up and the food flying everywhere, it's easy to go, oh, I can't wait until they're older. But then they're teenagers and that's way harder than when they're little. So I just say live in every moment. And yeah, you're going to be tired, but don't wish it away. Don't wish for the next thing to come because you will look back and be sad and go, oh, I loved it when they were all together playing in the floor and you had control over what was going on. Oh my gosh, you're gonna make me cry. I feel like that was a sermon I needed to hear. <laughs> swimming star Katie Ledecky in the house. Eddie, come on out. You're making me cry. This is an incredible moment. Join us every morning on Today. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. 
It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope, the COVID vaccines. I know, I know, it's been a little confusing. Like really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Welcome back. How's this for a client list? Let's say you're a designer and all of a sudden you have Lady Gaga, Oprah, Meghan Markle, and Michelle Obama. That's just bad. the name of you, not bad. <laughs> so he's had all of these folks. They've all placed their trust in fashion designer Brendan Maxwell. So this morning in our series, Through Mom's Eyes, I wanted to talk to his mom. I wanted to see, you know, she talked about the journey and what makes him tick, all of that good stuff, the journey to the runway. Take a look. Do you remember the first item of clothing that he made? Yeah, hey, I made a mistake of storing my nice dresses in a closet next to his bedroom. And he would take my dresses and redesign them and make them into them? whatever. Yes, they were very nice dresses too. I and mean, they were very pretty dresses. Did you ever think that it would be a future career for him? Or did you kind of have an idea that this could be something he would do? I knew it'd be something styling or kind of in that world. He was always critiquing what I was wearing. He was always, you know, and believe me, I was asking, do these earrings look okay? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me what it was like in those early years in the thick of it. It was really hard because I had Brandon here, you know, at his age doing his thing, and then his sister, and then I've got babies at home. Brandon had his both grandparents here, aunts and uncles. So there was always somebody at every event. There was a lot of help. Brandon mentioned his love for his grandmother's job at a fashion boutique. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about that? It was one of those stores where you can call up and say, hey, I need this outfit for this event. And you walked in, she had a wrap full, she had the outfit, she had the shoes, she had the earrings, she had the purses. I think a lot of that love of what he does, designing clothes, came from that, watching my mom. You know, he mentioned in an article once that he felt threatened and insecure outside of his loving cocoon. Did you see that as a parent? I did see his insecurities. And I mean, I think he questioned himself a lot, but I think deep down inside, it's almost like, you know, you hear Brandon, he has said this several times, lean into who you are. And he was always leaning. He was always moving in that direction. He was true to himself. As a parent, what do you do when you know your child is insecure or they may feel like an outsider sometimes. You know, you just reassure them and you're positive. I always had the faith and belief in him. Of course, he had it in himself. You just have to just remind him it's there. Do you still have pinch me moments? Maybe when you see his name in clothes or on billboards, like that's my son. I mean, starting with styling Gaga or styling a campaign for her and it's showing up in a magazine. It never gets old. We used to come home every day and watch Oprah. And when he dressed Oprah, I mean, and I'm not saying that that's just my favorite. There's so many, but I'm just saying there's right over on my desk. I mean, it's, that's, that's a that's a moment. The best outfit Brandon has styled or designed for you over the years? The best will have to be the very first one. He surprised me with my very first. June of 2016, I'll never forget. And it was absolutely gorgeous. And I felt so beautiful in it. It hit all the right places. And I couldn't believe I was actually wearing my, my own son. Last year during Fashion Week, your son dedicated his line to you and mentioned how your battle with breast cancer made him see how strong you truly were. How did that moment feel? While we were walking down that runway, I was thinking of the day he was born and all the things we've been through. And I couldn't believe that he made his dreams come true. And my son's doing what he's meant to do. How were your children there for you when you needed them? Was that a hard switch to lean on them rather than you? Brandon was flying in, which I tried to, he was in the middle of, you know, filming Project Runway. All of my kids, my daughter Katie, all of them, love and support, they did, they were the best. Is there anything else that you want moms, or not just moms, but parents to know about this journey and this thing called motherhood? 
pay attention to who they are and build on that, encourage that. If they're doing what they love and what their true self is, then they're going to be a success. How terrific. I love this segment right. so, so much. And every time I meet a mom, I say they're my new favorite mom. Because <laughs> we sit and we talk for almost yeah. an hour about all sorts of things. And this all started again where, you know, we interview people on this show. And sometimes, you know, when we'll interview somebody and we'll say, they're delightful. Or we mm-hmm. just think they're so Awesome. Sometimes I wonder, what did your mama feed you? Like, how'd you turn out so great? Well, I also watch it, too, as a mom, looking for advice, you Mm -hmm. know, trying to see who my kids are going to become and how you foster. Absolutely, absolutely. So with this one, there's a a 10-minute conversation that we put together. We were laughing and talking and carrying on. So we put all of that on thirdhourtoday.com. So you'll definitely head there. Um, It's good. Hey, today, all day, we've got an exciting show for you on this Wednesday morning, including an all-day exclusive chat you can only see here. Let's kick it off with pop star Chanel steps in for Carson with a look at The Crown and the actors bringing Princess Diana and Prince Charles to life. Plus, some news about Dolly Parton. Take a look. Best time of the morning right now. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Playing the role of Carson. Good morning. Chanel Jones. In for Carson. We have good stuff for you this morning. The first one is a good one. America's Got Talent. You might remember the Northwell Health Nurse Choir, for their golden buzzer audition. You remember this back in June? Well, the group made up entirely of frontline heroes from right here in New York returned to the stage last night for the show's quarterfinals. And they brought the house down with the performance of You Will Be Found from the Broadway show Dear Evan Hansen. Listen to this. And you're watching these men and women, and they're on the front lines. Yeah, all that, and they save lives. Right? No surprise. The emotional performance really moved the judges. In fact, here's what Howie Mandel had to say. This is one where I can't detach the story of who you are from what you do and how you sound. Because, you know, we hear ad ad nauseum, we're all in this together. We couldn't all be in this together if there weren't people like you saving our lives. That was the most beautiful moment. America, you'd be crazy if you didn't vote them as one of the seven tonight. Yeah, thank you. So powerful. America's Got Talent continues tonight at 8, 7 Central, right here on NBC. Next up, Prince Charles and Princess Diana, 40 years after their historic wedding of the century. The former couple is set to return to the spotlight soon on screens big and small. Netflix just released a first look at the new cast taking on the royal roles in their upcoming season of The Crown. Seen here, tenant actress Elizabeth Debicki transforms. Look at that. Wow, she looks just like that. Into Princess Diana. It's the same part Emma Corwin is currently Emmy nominated for. And Dominic West steps into the shoes of her then estranged husband, Prince Charles. Everybody's staring at the picture here. Yeah. Formerly played by actor Josh O'Connor, who also happens to be Emmy nominated for his part in the show's previous season. Debicki and West are set to portray the couple in The Crown's final two seasons, picking up in the early 90s. And if that isn't enough royal content for you, (laughs) the highly anticipated Princess Diana biopic led by Kristen Stewart has announced a premiere date. The film that will be called Spencer is set to hit theaters November 5th. The movie will take place during the period of time when Diana decides to leave her marriage with Prince Charles. A lot of people are looking forward to seeing what she can do with that role. All right, next up, Dolly Parton, the music legend, recently sat down with the UK's Absolute Radio to chat about her upcoming book, new music, and how she got involved with funding research for the COVID-19 vaccine. Here's what she had to say. When the pandemic came out, I just felt kind of led to do something because I knew something bad was on the rise. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to kind of help with that. So I donated to help with that. So mine was a small part, of course, but I probably get a lot more credit than I deserve. But I was happy to be part of that. Of course, Dolly wouldn't be one to take all the credit, but seriously, what can't she do? <laughs> she everything. All right, and finally, this is a good one. Aisha Curry, she's the latest guest to join our buddy Jill Martin for her Today All Day series, Shop Today. The two sat down to talk about finding balance, her lifestyle brand, Sweet July, and family life with husband Steph Curry. Here's a peek. What was the biggest silver lining you took from the pandemic? I genuinely feel like in the midst of 
all of the chaos and the sadness and the uncertainty, the, the underlying blessing is I feel like we got time back that we wouldn't have had otherwise. I got to see him be their teacher and I got to see him cook dinner on occasion. It's such a turn on to see. <laughs> probably so inappropriate but it is it's like it's it's refreshing to, to see that beautiful mm -hmm. family there you can catch their full conversation on shop today with jill martin tomorrow at noon four and 8 p.m eastern streaming only on today all day lots for you this yeah, morning thank yes. you Jill. up next on today talks new details about covid breakthrough cases and what you need to know stay with us Good morning. Welcome to Today. Start your day with us every morning. Get your daily dose of news on the go with the Today podcast. Oh. Boom. And stream today anytime you want. Today, all day. Every day. Wherever you are, today is there. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring has sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. Uh, celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it! For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Welcome back. Today on the third hour, Dr. Natalie Azar shares important details about breakthrough COVID infections and the steps you can take to stay safe. Take a look. With all that going on and word of a third vaccine dose, it's causing some confusion and concern. So we called on NBC News medical contributor, Dr. Natalie Azar, to help sort things out for us. Dr. Azar, good morning. Good morning. So let's talk about this potential booster. Uh, the, it's, it's now recommended to get the booster eight months after receiving uh, either the second dose of Pfizer or Moderna. Why eight months? Why is that the magic number? That is the million dollar question today, Dylan. And, and yes, I think all of us are hoping to get some more clarity uh, after that 11 a.m. CDC conference today, which we will all be tuning into. Um, what it appears to be is that experts are relying on data from both Israel as well as in the United States. So Israeli data seems to suggest that immunity against the Pfizer or toward or against the coronavirus with the Pfizer vaccine appears to wane the longer you are out from vaccination. Mm -hmm. And they found this that basically protected about 55 percent against severe disease in individuals who were over the age of 65 if they were vaccinated in January versus April, suggesting that diminution of protection as time goes on. In the U.S., there's some also some data out from the Mayo uh, preprint data that looks like there's also some waning efficacy and effectiveness for both Moderna and Pfizer. I do want to point out, though, that the absolute numbers of breakthrough infections in the hospital is still lower mm -hmm. than the unvaccinated group, but it appears that these breakthrough infections might be making up a higher percentage of the total of hospitalizations Scary. and deaths that we had previously observed. Mm -hmm. so, so, Natalie, certain Americans with weakened immune systems have already started to get their third doses. Who falls into yeah. the immunocompromised category? And asking for a friend, why does it in include seniors? Mm -hmm. Who are like exactly, Al. Exactly. Why doesn't it inc include seniors? I also felt that that was a curious omission last week. And again, I think that we're going to hear a modification of that recommendation in a couple of hours. So stay tuned. 
regarding who is currently eligible. It's people who are considered moderately or severely immunocompromised. This includes individuals who are undergoing active chemotherapy or immunotherapy for cancer, solid organs, stem cell transplant recipients, people with immunodeficiency syndromes, people, for example, who've had a spleen removed would fall into this category, advanced or untreated HIV, as well as patients with autoimmune conditions who are on certain immunosuppressive medications. That is the current eligibility list. For more detail, please go to the CDC website. It gives a little more information there. I have three relatives in three different cities around the country who have been vaccinated who are now dealing with COVID. I literally oh, yeah. just really? got text this morning. Yes. Yep. Wow. So this booster, what does it do, actually? So the booster is meant to immediately increase those neutralizing antibodies, which we talk about all the time, particularly in the nasopharynx, which is the nose, mouth area. This is the portal of entry for coronavirus. And I just want to, you know, make a point that some vaccines are given as a series to get to the most, you know, effective immune response. Think hepatitis B, measles, mumps, rubella, measles, mumps, rubella. Some vaccines are given as boosters like the tetanus, the Tdap. And we don't know exactly where COVID-19 vaccines are going to fall just yet. But again, boosters are really to enhance those neutralizing antibodies. And then that sets off the cascade of T-cells and all that stuff down the line. Mm. Dr. Natalie, it seems like the Moderna and Pfizer vaccines, they had higher efficacy against uh, COVID. Why are they the ones that need the booster and Johnson & Johnson doesn't? That, I, that, that's a very, very good, nice way that you posed that question. Another, a little bit of a head scratcher. Don't shoot the messenger. But this was the explanation that the CDC gave last week. Number one, this EUA is only for the mRNA vaccines. The FDA, uh, the Johnson & Johnson has not applied yet for, for an EUA for a booster, number one. They also said, look, the sheer number of people who got the Johnson & Johnson, 14 million, as opposed to like 155 million mm -hmm. individuals who got the mRNA earlier than the Johnson & Johnson, likely includes that immunocompromised group. So they said they kind of feel like that's the priority. I will say that Johnson & Johnson is conducting their trial of a second dose, you know, a two-shot series as opposed to one shot, and we're hoping to have that data by the end of the month. I guarantee you they're very likely going to apply for um, an expansion on their authorization for a booster if that study is, you know, positive or, or in indicates mm -hmm. more protection. Mm -hmm. and, and one more note, there's a new study published earlier this week in the journal uh, JAMA Pediatrics that found babies and toddlers are more likely than teens to spread the coronavirus to others in the house. So what role does this play as we move toward boosters, especially as kids, you know, too young to receive the vaccine, head back to school? Right. Right. So this is important. I think a little nuance uh, in, interpreting, in interpreting this is important. It's not because children are super spreaders. In fact, even though we know that there is a bi-directionality to transmission, meaning adults can transmit to kids and vice versa, the direction is usually going to be adults to adults, teens to teens and teens to adults or adults to kids. But because babies and toddlers share such close physical mm. space with the people around them, that's thought to be the explanation for why that occurs. And I think it just reminds us how important it is to protect these vulnerable kids mm. under the age of 12 who are not yet eligible for vaccination to vaccinate as many people in that child's bubble as possible, whether it's parents, caretakers, older siblings, teachers, that kind of thing. And Allie, really quickly, any idea when that might happen, when approval for emergency approval for 12 and under would or under 12 yeah. would happen? Right now, the timing out looks like for, our, for the age group 5 to 11 that we're going to get that data very soon, I would say in September, early, you know, early fall. Um, and then it's a process, again, of applying for that EUA. But the expectation um, is that hopefully by the end of the calendar year and certainly early uh, 2022, that that age group will be eligible for vaccination. It just will not be, uh, you know, by the time school starts yeah. this year, unfortunately. Dr. Natalie about. Azar, thank you so much for joining us again this morning. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Nat. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope. The COVID vaccines. I know, I know. It's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Let's go. This is a critical time.
start point for this fire. And good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. Good evening from New Orleans. There is breaking news. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Hey guys, welcome to May. So happy you're joining us. The U.S. swimming star Katie Ledecky in the house. Eddie, come on out. You're making me cry. This is an incredible moment. Join us every morning on Today. Good morning. Welcome to Today. Start your day with us every morning. Get your daily dose of news on the go with the Today Podcast. <laughs> Boom. Boom. And stream today anytime you want. Today, all day. Every day. Wherever you are, today is there. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back. Today on Hoda and Jenna, we go unscripted. Take a look. It is time for Unscripted. By the way, I love Daniel Radcliffe. I know. Wasn't he so great? <laughs> Wait, what's, what's her last name? Viswanathan. Nathan. Viswan Nathan. Well, I no, loved no. her. Well, I loved how she was like, they said, this, whatever your name is or whatever. I know. When, during roll call. I know. She's that, cute. She's Super really, cute. really cute. All okay, right. so there's a question mm -hmm. that I have to ask specifically for you. <laughs> okay. When you think about where you're eating or hanging, do you have mm -hmm. a designated spot in your house or the sofa or wherever to sit? Um, when the kids eat super early at five o'clock, so when I eat with the kids, which is a probably lot. a lot, yeah. yeah. And usually Joel's not home yeah. at that time, so usually it's I sit at the head of the table and the two kids sit on either side. Okay. So, and Haley and Hope have their, always have their seats, same yes. seat. Yep. And do you remember when you were a little girl, like when you ate dinner where you ate, like that was your I'm seat? I'm pretty that was sure I remember, like yeah. my back faced the door yeah, yeah, and yeah. Barbara's the, was the back was towards the yeah, window. That's yeah. in my mind. Because people have desert. Now, what about for your family when you guys eat dinner now? When we eat dinner now, the girls have, they eat early too. And yeah. usually when they eat, like in the city, we don't we don't really have a big There's table. Room, right? They sit at uh, an island, really, mm -hmm. our kitchen island. And then I stand. Yeah. So yes, they have designated seats. But if we eat together. all together somewhere, like at a restaurant or wherever oh, else, yeah. It's free for all. What about on the couch? When you and only you, when you and Henry are watching Ted Lasso and you're about to sit down, do you always sit in the same? I'm gonna say something that might that might be mm -hmm. sort of shocking. I, we don't watch TV on the couch very often. Oh, you watch it in bed. We watch it in bed. Do you sports on the couch? Okay, so you're watching sports the game. on the couch. But usually when we're watching the game, I'm cleaning. <laughs> <laughs> so you never sit together. So we don't sit that often. And they say but that everybody where's your has favorite place to sit. My favorite outside. Yes. Outside. Outside on the back, like on the back porch. I love to sit outside. I love to sit outside with like a coffee, with like a book. Yes. I just like to sit out. How about Are you, you out there all the time? I yes. I agree, but also. In the city, we can't. Sometimes but. when I just need to collect myself, mm -hmm. and this is very strange, what? but and it doesn't happen all the time, but like if I need a moment, yeah. I go and I sit in bathroom. my bathtub. Oh, bat it, you sit inside of it. Is there water in there? Sometimes just, there is, sometimes, sometimes there, there isn't. Some, just to get away. It's the only... How'd they know I was going to say this? This is unscripted, yet bubbles are coming up. <laughs> Meet Will Levis, okay? He's the new quarterback for the University of Kentucky, and he's going viral. You know, you'd think it was like, oh, because he can, like, throw a pass 200 yards or something crazy. Running no. really fast. No. No. It's the way he eats a banana, okay? TikTok captioned this. I don't fear the brown spots. They fear me. Oh, he's going right so after here it. here he goes. Let's watch. Oh, no. No, no, no. Don't no, he's not. No, no. That's a bad idea. Oh. He's just chewing them. Do y'all, are right we trying off. this? Are they going to about to bring out bananas for us? No. Look at him. And plus, he's chewing it like in no time. It's not even like it's taking him time to grind it up. He Don't must have you great think that's teeth. hard to digest or no? Maybe not for him. Look at him. I like the music too. Well, wait, is he, he's not going to go all the way. You can't eat that last one. He's going to eat the no, little he can't. tail? No, you can't. No, he did. Oh, God, he put the whole thing he in. He ate the tail. Well, we did research. 
I love how he's just staring at us. Okay, it turns out the banana peels are edible. They do contain potassium and fiber. The fruit has more potassium yeah, and does. more fiber but, than the skin itself. They say you can actually put that in your smoothies, your banana bread, and some people even make vegan pulled pork sandwiches. With the peels? You know what it is? It has to be really brown. I don't mind a brown banana, do you? I prefer a non-brown banana. Why? <laughs> When it's when the when the mush gets to the consistency <laughs> of like pudding, then it's like for the smoothie. Then you put it in the smoothie, or you freeze it for banana bread. When it's like when it kind of dissolves in your mouth yeah, without yeah. a chew. Yeah, but don't you hate like an unripe like a green? It's like green, and you're trying to eat. I don't like those. Well, I agree. No. If it's too hard, yeah. Yeah. I thought they were gonna like wheel out. You know, knowing our show, wheel out some brown ones and see if we would do it. <laughs> I have for humor once, just to make my sister laugh. Do what? Ate the skin of an orange. Like. Just to make her laugh. Did she laugh? Yeah, she did. Okay. All right. But they do say you've got to wash the banana thoroughly before That's you eat it. That's the main concern. All right, let's, let's get to something we can eat. Okay. For real. Okay, let's do this. Okay, this is the new brown. Oh, wait, no, no. It's okay. a Girl Scout yeah, cookie. Yes, a brand new Girl Scout cookie, and it's joining the mix. They're calling it Adventureful. Come on, Silver Fox. Oh, hey, come on, Jerry. Foxy. Wow, you're a fox. These are called Adventurefuls, y'all. These are the new so Girl Scout cookies. They have chocolate and caramel. And they're brownie inspired they're with brownie some sea inspired. salt. Oh my God, you know these are good. Okay, ready? Uh huh. One. Oh, you already two. Did two. I didn't bite yet. Three. Three. Mm. Rank it. Mm. Rank it in the world of mm. in the world of Girl Tag Scouts. Tagalongs, mm -hmm. thin mints, and then these. I say thin mints only if they're frozen. Uh -huh. Tagalongs. Mm -hmm. I have to say, and I hate to, and these are delicious, but I would give a shortbread before this. Is that bad? Mm mm. But. Samoas! Nope. Wait, Samoas! What's a tag along? I forgot. The tag along is a delicious one that I always like to support. Which is the one with coconut on it that's circle? I like a Samoa. You like the Samoa better than the tag along? I like the Samoa. What's the tag along? Tag along is the chocolate and peanut butter one oh, that is the no, delish. You I do like not like that. that? No, I do like it. Okay. But mine goes, sorry, I'm confused. Okay. Samoa. Number first. one? Samoa that's breaking is news. definitely number one. Mm mm. Then tag along, then thin mint, and then these. They're all good. They are good. They're real good. I mean, I would eat any of them, but if we're going to put them, you don't like a shortbread? I, a shortbread, I feel like you can just eat a little. And I have doom. to say something that's going to be controversial, but the lemon, the new lemon cookie. Oh, I love those. Oh, those are real would good. Would you put too. that above this too? Please don't push this far. <laughs> There's only so far down you can push this cookie, and it's delicious. <laughs> <laughs> What's the one that nobody likes? I forgot. Anybody? <laughs> No. That, just that plain peanut butter one. I mean, it's just boring. Oh yeah, I kind of like it. All right, we this, have to take a moment. Yes. To pay tribute to somebody who we love so much. He is alive. Pay <laughs> 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 you know tribute sometimes means that it's over rope. You're. <laughs> Eating, I was trying to get the chocolate out of my mouth, so it's really slow. He is alive. He's our camera operator, Bob Yeager. We call him Rope around here, you guys. He's retiring, and he is such a part of the show. Um, he's been on the air longer than any anchor has been on the show, <laughs> and he's anchored probably. He's been on TV more than any anchor, but 37 years on the program, Rope. You, you got to see your whole family this morning. I don't know if you guys got a chance to see, but here's a little bit of uh, Rope's whole family surprising him on the plaza with the crowd. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, that's Mary. That. Yeah, he's got his wife, he's got his parents, yeah. his kids. Tell us what it, what it was like, um, I don't know, just kind of knowing that this moment's coming. Um, I knew something was happening. Yeah. I didn't know it was today, and I didn't know it was going to be this You're, special. I thought it was just maybe a little mention bring me up to the couch, talk oh. a little bit, but uh, this was very, very moving. Well, well, Rope, can we just tell you that you, yeah. first of all, I have had some more vodka with, yeah. <laughs> with Rope. Remember Russia? Sochi. Sochi, you are beloved. You have made all of us feel welcome and important Thank since you. the day we walked in. You make us smile. You made and us I, laugh. I think the thing that makes a show work, all the shows work, is when there's like real love behind the camera and on the team. Like, it doesn't work. Like, you're part of it. And right. when you say something, we echo it. Yes. We steal everything he says, <laughs> and we pretend it's ours. <laughs> like, I just thought of that quip. Rope has the best quips He's, in the world. He has the best dad jokes, and you are going to be so, yeah, so I missed. I've always felt you. more than just working behind the scenes. Of course. I've always felt we've always been a 
close knit group. Well, that's well how we, we love feel. Rope, and we I love, love you. Yeah, we're gonna. Thanks. But so Rope's got another week and a half or two weeks, so he'll yeah. be around for a little bit. If I knew you liked me this much, I might not have retired. <laughs> oh, we didn't want you to retire. We love you. We love Rope. you, Rope. Have fun with your grandkids. Thank you. It's we love you, honey. All right. Thank you. Today talk continues after the break. We have an exclusive chat you can only see here on Today All Day. This is a critical choke point for this fire. And good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? What are the issues that the party stands for? That seems to be the missing piece here. If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show. Oh, in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back to Today Talks and our exclusive content you can see only here on Today All Day. Um, I, you know, it's hilarious. Uh, what? Because I have to tell you, I was never, we tried the new Girl Scout cookie today. Oh yeah, that's a good topic. I was never a Girl Scout. And it kind of made, I sort of felt Did bad about it. you want to be? No, I wanted to be. I get, asked my mom get, yeah. if, yeah. well, I wanted, the, before Girl Scouts, at least in Texas, there was like lamps. We called it brownies, but what, what There was like, it, it was brownies, but there was like um, lamp, campfire girls or Oh, something. campfire girls. Yeah, 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 lamp yeah, yeah. I can't remember, but the yeah. point is, um, and I, listen, as a mother now, I appreciate this, but I think my mom didn't, you know, she's going to disagree with this, but I don't think she wanted to take me to the meetings. <laughs> <laughs> she did not believe in overscheduling at all or by scheduling. Way, by the way, that may actually be the right way to go. Your mom may have actually had the right way to go because when you think about, so she didn't want to have meetings. She, I just think she thought I had soccer and yeah. that activity was enough. Enough. It oh, probably... and I walked to piano and voice lessons. So you, wait, 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 wait. You had voice lessons? I took voice lessons. And piano? And piano, and I, that's when I thought I could be a Broadway star. I didn't know that you took voice lessons. Yeah, Marisa Messina, I would walk to her apartment. So how did she teach you voice lessons? Like, what did she do? Like, what? how did she do I mean, do you've it? heard Kathy Lee be like, yeah. da, 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 da. She used to do that? Yes. <laughs> By the way, Jennifer Lopez has a voice coach um, yeah. who's really amazing. And I actually saw him on the plaza. He was singing backup for somebody else. I can't even remember who, but it was amazing. It was could, do you think he could but teach you know us what he how does? to sing? You know what he does? He looks at you and he goes like this. <clears throat> uh, then he says, match me, watch. Uh, uh, like, <laughs> he hits a note and then you can you could take your voice and match. Like, he knows how to, we don't know we, how to hit a yeah. note. Ours were two flat notes. But if you know how to Wait. hit a note, he just tells you to mimic him. Can mimic I ask him. you a question? Yeah. Do you think he could teach us, us how to sing? I mean, I don't know. He, I don't know if he can teach people like us, but maybe. Could we try if, that? All we need are like, I don't, I don't think you need a lot of notes. You just have to know your, your little range. If it's small, then stay in your range. I know, mine is like Janis Joplin. -y. <laughs> <laughs> or when I sing out loud to my kids, that's yeah. what I think it is. You know what? I can hit one note and I only know it. What because is it? whenever the Dixie Chicks are singing Landslide, oh, yeah. it's the very end. It's the last so word. So sing it. The last word is maybe. Okay. Maybe. Well, anyway, I'm just telling you whenever like that, that you comes. I also like that you just chose the Dixie well, Chick version over no, because that's the only, Mac. No, 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 because that's the one when I sing it, I go, oh, oh my God, that's my that's note. That's range. Just the last word. I know. I think You'll see, Bobby that's McGee, my note. I think Bobby McGee is my note. But the, so Wait, what were you talking about? What was this about? Oh, this was about Girl Scout 
girls got confused. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And anyway, you, oh, I, going to meetings. So then, yeah. think about how many times it was rubbed in my face. <laughs> that you didn't go. I, I would. All my friends got to do it. I would go to the grocery store, and there they would be selling in their matching tickets. uniforms. I mean, selling cookies. And the cookies that I wanted to eat. Right. But my right. mom wouldn't buy me those cookies. Right. Well, because they were selling those cookies. I know. I know. I I was a Girl Scout, um, and I remember. Are you I trying remember, to rub it in? No, no, because whenever we got off the no, because our Girl Scouts, when I got off the bus, I still remember it because there was uh, there were commercials all over TV, PSAs that said it was like we need leaders, so everyone was always yeah. chanting. So whenever we got off the bus, the whole school bus would be like, we need <laughs> leaders. We. That's what I remember going to my Girl Scout meetings. Well, Henry was an Eagle Scout, <gasps> a Boy Scout. Eagle Scout. And to when, be an Eagle Scout, it's a huge deal. I, that's what you sound just like oh, my mom. When yes, I met Henry, big. my mom was like, oh, an Eagle, Eagle Scout, no, you must marry deal. him. That's All right, it. and you did. Okay. All right, well, that's it for this episode of Today Docs. What did we talk about? Not much. All Keep right. watching for more of Today All Goodbye. Day. Bye. Hey, Willie, it's good to see you. Thank you. It's good to be seen. <laughs> so let's let's talk about that album, That's Life. I didn't fully appreciate what a big fan of Frank Sinatra you were and always have been since you were a young man. <clears throat> what was it about Frank when you were young that so caught your ear down in Texas? Well, his choice of songs, first of all, uh, he could pick them, you know. I, I don't know if he was a writer or not. But I know he could really uh, go into a session, and he I knew he'd have 10 good songs. And uh, he never let me down, you know. Uh, practically everything that he's recorded, I've loved it. So naturally, I'm a huge Sinatra fan. And you talk a lot about, Willie, his phrasing. And I think people who aren't in your line of work don't fully understand quite what that means. What does it mean to have great phrasing the way Frank did? Well, that was another thing that I liked about Frank was his phrasing. Uh, he never did the same song twice the same way. He did it the way he felt it, and each way he felt it a little bit different than he did the time before. But that's cool. I, that's what I loved about it. And that's unique, isn't it? I mean, most people want to stay on the beat, and he was ahead of it sometimes and behind it other times, and he didn't mind that. Yeah, I love that. I love to be able to play with the beat. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, you screw up sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Beautifully, though. Beautifully screw yeah, up. You try to cover it up. That's right. That's right. So what compelled you then to start covering some of his songs? You had an album out a couple of years ago that won you a Grammy. And now this is another effort covering some of Frank's songs. What made you think, I love the guy so much that I'm going to do one of his albums? Well, <clears throat> the first... Uh, album that I, I did of Sinatra's because was because I love him so much <clears throat> and we had so much success with that one that uh, I said why not let's do another one because there's a uh, hundred other great songs out there. Is Cottage there any... for Sale. Uh, yeah. Cottage for Sale to me is one of the most beautiful songs I've ever heard. Hmm. Is there a challenge to reproducing songs that people love so much? Do you ever wonder Boy, people love the way Frank did it. I'm not sure how they'll feel about the way I sing it. Well, you have to believe that your fans at least will like the way you're doing it. Uh, I don't think anybody expected me to sound like Frank. Uh, and <laughs> even though I was good, I, I, just, I don't have that good a voice. Well, you, it's beautiful. I was listening to it last night and this morning. It's just a beautiful album. He'd be so proud of you. Do you um, did you have much of a relationship with Frank? I know you looked up to him when you were young. Did you get to know him a little bit? Yeah, I did. We played some shows together. Uh, we played a show, I think, Vegas and Reno and different places. And 
one of my greatest regrets, I was telling somebody a while ago, is that one night we played a show in Vegas and he invited me by his place to hang out and I couldn't. I had to get on a bus and go to L.A. And I always regretted that I didn't get to hang out with Frank. I mean, not many people would pass up the opportunity to hang with Sinatra in Vegas. <laughs> yeah. And it stays with you, doesn't it? Well, he's um, he's got he's such a unique character. Did you once you got to know him, what was he like to be around? Well, he's a lot of fun. He was, you know, he's, tell a few jokes and uh, he was great, you know. Let's go. And good evening from New Orleans, there is breaking news. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Let's go. And good evening from New Orleans. There is breaking news. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope, the COVID vaccines. I know, I know, it's been a little confusing. Like really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. You guys did, I was just telling you before we started, you did some um, videos together for NASA, which I was watching earlier. And it's Frank in his tuxedo and you and your headband and your, and your pigtails. And it was just two guys who didn't like look like they ought to be together, but it worked perfectly. You guys had some fun, didn't you? Yeah, that was, I remember doing that. Uh, I think Reagan was in that some way too. I remember him being in there. Uh, yeah, it was back in the 80s. That's you know, right. I love doing Sinatra songs and, uh, you know, I probably won't do another album, but I'm sure glad that I got to do two, you know. And Willie, how do you pick the songs that you'll put on an album? Because as you say, there are just so many to choose from with him. It wasn't hard at all. I just kind of, uh, I said, yeah, I caught it for sale. Yeah, we'll do that one. We'll do this one. We'll do that one. It was a no brainer, really. Yeah, he's, uh, he, um, in some ways, he is an icon in the way that you are an icon. Is that a strange thing? for you to think about that there are young artists out there who want to grow up to be Willie Nelson or would love to someday play a bunch of your songs on an album? I need to talk to them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they need some advice. <laughs> <laughs> what does that term mean to you? Legend, Willie Nelson, he's a legend. What does that mean to you? I thought it was a legend. I wasn't sure. <laughs> <laughs> So those, I'm so big words always throw me. Yeah, legend, icon, all those things. I bet they do. I bet they do. Um, I'm just I'm so interested that growing up in that little town in, in Texas, in Abbott, Texas, about your musical taste that brought you to Frank Sinatra. What kind? I know you grew up singing in the church, and Amazing Grace was probably your first song. Who are your other influences at that young age, Willie? Well, Hank Williams. Uh, Bob Wills, Ted Death, and Floyd Tillman, just so many of the old, old time guys that I knew, and Leon Payne, uh, a blind singer from Texas. <clears throat> he had a great song called I Love You Because. But I don't know, I just uh, love all those old songs, and I never get tired of hearing them, and I never get tired of singing them. Were there a lot of people listening to Sinatra in Abbott, Texas? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. He was popular everywhere. Yeah, he was. He was. Everybody knew Frank. 
But I imagine you grew up based on the names that you just listed, Willie, that you, you wanted to grow up to be a cowboy. You wanted to be a country singer. And Frank was something a little different. So how did you use his influences in your own career? Well, uh, you know, I also like Gene Archery and Roy Rogers and, uh, you know, the Cowboys. And so I kind of mixed it all together. Uh, but I was glad that I got to know Sinatra and Gene Archery. That's a pretty cool life, if you can say that, both yeah. of them, huh? <laughs> Do you remember, Willie, the first song you wrote back when you were, I guess, seven years old with your new guitar? Or do you remember playing in front of a crowd for the first time? I remember the first poem. I was about five years old, six years old. And uh, they introduced me to do something. And uh, my poem was, what are you looking at me for? I ain't got nothing to say. If you don't like the looks of me, look the other way. <laughs> You're five years old with that attitude, Willie? Yeah. <laughs> and you never really on, changed. I had, little, I had on a little white sailor suit with, you know, red trimmings. And I got nervous doing my poem. I started picking my nose. <laughs> and so I started, my nose started bleeding all over my little oh. sailor suit. And what are you looking at me for? <laughs> <laughs> that one will stay with you. That moment will it stay did. with you for a long time. So you, you come up playing that music, Willie, and then I guess around 1960, you decide it's time to go to Nashville. Uh, what was it like once you got to town there? To Nashville? Yeah, yeah, because I, you know, it's funny, Willie, I was looking at old pictures of you. We know, we think we know what Willie Nelson looks like, but when you first got there, you looked like you could have been in the Beatles or something like that, or the Beach Boys. <laughs> well, and I, I got into the hog business up there in Nashville, too, you know. I, I raised hogs for a long time and uh, uh, wore my overalls a lot. So <laughs> <laughs> I've got an album cover with me with overalls. On. I weighed about, you know, 180 pounds. <laughs> so it was healthy up there, Ridge Top, Tennessee. Yeah, yeah. And professionally, as you kind of tried to find your way, you weren't originally the outlaw country, as people have called you since then, were you? Not really. I really didn't, uh, I didn't consider myself being, you know, because I liked all the old country guys, Ray Price and, you know, Roy Acuff and Hank Williams. I loved all those guys. Uh, but I left, honestly, I left Nashville and come down to Texas because this was where all my jobs were. The, you know, the broken spoke and the, the different uh, John T. Floors, all the clubs around Texas that I grew up playing. Uh, there wasn't any, many places to play in Nashville. So, hmm. and I was on the Grand Ole Opry. And in order to say you're a member of the Grand Ole Opry, you have to play it uh, 26 weeks out of the year. Hmm. So a lot of times I'd be in down here in Austin or somewhere on Friday night, and it would be hard for me to get back on Saturday night to do the, the Grand Ole Opry. So it's just a matter of long distance and I just couldn't do it. I had to choose and I wasn't, I was making a little money down here in the clubs. So uh, <laughs> that brought me on down. I bet. I bet. You got to go where the go where the money is. And when did you feel, Willie, like you sort of um, you made it? It's a cliche that you'd broken through and that people were starting to listen to your music and maybe starting to buy your music. And you weren't just playing small clubs in Texas. Honestly, the first time I thought I had made it. I had been picking cotton and baling hay and working in corn shellers up there in Abbott, and I had uh, got a job playing guitar. I was 12 years old, and I got a job playing rhythm guitar in a Bohemian polka band down in West, which was six miles south of Abbott at the SPJST hall down there, and I made $8. 
I said, what the hey, man? You know, <laughs> I didn't like this much picking cotton all week. So I found me another way to go. So that, that was my first paying gig. And that was the moment you realized, oh, maybe I could make a living doing this? There you go. And here you are, still making a living doing it every every day. Did you, um, I, I wonder, Willie, if you, when you go out and play all these wonderful songs that you've written over the years, is there one that feels most special to you or more special than the others? Well, I do a medley sometimes of uh, three songs that I wrote that kind of my favorites, uh, Funny How Time Slips Away, Crazy, mm. and Nightlife. And I, I, you know, I do those in a medley on my show. So uh, I, those three songs have really been good for me. Yeah, I bet. Well, I, I'm glad you mentioned Crazy because I'm not sure everybody, casual fan, knows that you wrote Crazy and that Patsy Cline obviously recorded it famously. But that is a Willie Nelson song. Did you write that for Patsy? Did you have her in mind when you wrote it? No. Uh, I had uh, already had it written when I came to Nashville. And uh, I was hanging out in a place called Tootsie's Orchid Lounge. Do you ever hear sure. of that place? I've been, yes. And, <laughs> and uh, I ran into a guy. Uh, his name was Charlie Dick, and he happened to be Patsy Cline's husband. And we were in Tootsies and drinking a little beer, you know, and I had brought a, a 45 up and put it on Tootsies' jukebox of me singing crazy. And he heard it and he said, you got to do that for Patsy. And I said, well, it's already after midnight. He said, don't matter. Come on. So we went over to Patsy's house that night to his house and Patsy's. And uh, I said, I ain't getting out. He's, so he went in and Patsy come out and made me get out and go in. And I sang the song for her and she recorded it that week. It was and it that was quick. Wow. All time uh, jukebox favorite. I think that's still true, Willie. I think it's the most played song in the history of the jukebox. Yeah. That's amazing. That's an amazing story. So, so was that the kind of song as you write them that you might want to keep for yourself? and not surrender because it's such a good song? No, I was writing for everybody, you know. Uh, one of the first songs I wrote was Family Bible. Mm. I sold it for $50 and uh, watched it go up to number one. Claude Gray <laughs> recorded it. <laughs> and I watched it go to number one. I said, oh God. <laughs> maybe, maybe you learned your lesson with that one then. <laughs> I did, I did. <laughs> swimming star Katie Ledecky in the house. Eddie, come on out. You're making me cry. This is an incredible moment. Join us every morning on Today. Good morning. Welcome to Today. Start your day with us every morning. Get your daily dose of news on the go with the Today podcast. <laughs> and stream today anytime you want. Today, all day. Every day. Wherever you are, today is there. Let's go. And good evening from New Orleans, there is breaking news. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope, the COVID vaccines. I know, I know, it's been a little confusing. Like really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Let's go. And good evening from New Orleans. There is breaking news. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. 
Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. What do you make of, Willie, of the way music is sold and distributed today as we talk of the business side of it? You know, people just cutting singles, putting them up on iTunes. How, how has the business changed that way over the years? Well, I, you know, I leave it up to anybody to, you know, to sell them any way he can, I guess. Uh, but for me, uh, I like the old common way of making an album or a CD and selling it or selling it that night on the show and try to make enough gas money to get to the next <laughs> show. So that's the, the way we did it. Yeah. And do you st- is your process the same? You're talking about writing all these songs during our year at home. Is the process basically the same as when you started back with crazy and songs like that, where you just sit down with a guitar with trigger and a piece of paper and figure it out? I wrote one not too long ago that uh, started out. Uh, I don't want to write another song, but I can't tell that to my mind. <laughs> it just keeps throwing out words and I have to try to make them rhyme. Oh, that is great. You just wrote that one? Yeah. See, still got it. So does that just come to you? You just sit down there and spit it out? <laughs> I love I wrote That's... one called Live Every, Day, Live Every Day Like It Was Your Last, and one day you'll be right. <laughs> <laughs> See, there's the genius right there. There's the genius. <laughs> You also, uh, Willie, I understand, have a book coming out called Willie Nelson's Letters to America. Right. What did you want to sit down and write to America? Well, honestly, Turk Pipkin, the writer, uh, an old friend of mine, is a great writer. And he's really writing the book, and I'm looking at it and say, that's good, you know. But uh, we write together really well. And this is not the first book we've done. So I really like what he's doing on it. And uh, maybe I'm contributing something. I hope so. <laughs> and, and what's the message of the book, Willie? Uh, if you're reading this book, you probably have run out of things to do. <laughs> <laughs> but is it, uh, are you speaking to sort of where the country is right now, Willie? Is that the idea behind it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. you've, you've, You've seen a couple of things in, in your life, Willie, born in the Depression and come up through World War II and the Civil Rights Movement in Vietnam and everything you've seen. What do you think about where the country is right now? Well, we have a lot of negatives going. Uh, I, you know, there's a lot of things that people are missing out on. You know, there's a great energy exchange whenever an artist comes to town and people come out and pay money to clap their hands and sing along with him. That's a very therapeutic thing to do. And to not be able to do that, uh, you know, it's not healthy. And it's not healthy for the musician who can't go play. So uh, this is a very trying time. We'll get through it, it will pass. And uh, uh, maybe uh, next fall, uh, things will get back more to normal. But in the meantime, we just gotta tough it out. I noticed, Willie, that your buddy Chris Christofferson announced he's retiring. Chicken. Uh, old... He's a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> no such announcement from you then, I trust. <laughs> well, I know. <laughs> not yet. No, not yet. So you, you'll be back as soon as they say you can go, you'll be back on that tour bus back on the road? Yeah, there. In, uh, that's right. I'll be looking for the next big town. Good, good. And speaking of Chris um, and, and Johnny and Whalen and your group in, in the Highway Men, uh, how do you look back on that moment and that time? Because maybe on paper, those four didn't quite go together. But man, when you when you sang, it was something special. How much fun was that? That was fantastic. We went all over the world and we had our families with us. Uh, we had 278 pieces of luggage. <laughs> <laughs> you don't somebody, exactly travel light, do you? <laughs> but we had all our wives and kids and everybody, and we went everywhere, and it was a lot of fun, a lot of fun. And you made some great music, too. I'm, I'm just curious, Willie, 
at this point in your career, in your life, you are as prolific, it seems to me, as you've been. I'm looking at Willie's Reserve over your shoulder and you've got all these businesses and companies going and you're writing books and recording albums and testing yourself creatively with a Sinatra album and then a gospel album. Where do you find the energy to be, you make us all tired, Willie? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. Uh, my wife, Annie, is pretty good at kicking me in the butt every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> she might be doing it right now. I can't see. <laughs> yeah, she is. <laughs> Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends of today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Oh, oh. Shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day Kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. And good evening from New Orleans, there is breaking news. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. How do you do it? How do you keep it all straight? And how do you run it all so well? Well, I, you know, I wasn't aware that it was that straight. <laughs> <laughs> From the outside, it looks like it's going okay. Well, I'm doing a good job if I'm covering it up good, I guess. <laughs> but thank you. Know, you. Yeah. Um, Frank Sinatra famously talked about regrets that he had a few. When you look back on your career, can you come up with any yourself? If I changed anything in the back, it would change where I am now. And I really like where I am now, so I wouldn't change a thing. Hmm. That's a good way to look at it. You wouldn't change the road because it brought you where you are right now. That's right. Do you ever think back, Willie, at, boy, seven, eight-year-old Willie Nelson in Abbott, Texas, and think, my goodness, how did that little boy get to where you're sitting right now in life with your career? Well, you know, my sister and I have been playing music together all our lives. Yeah. And I figure that's what we'll always do. And I hope we can always do it together. But it's been an incredible, you know, uh, life being able to play music and make a living doing what you really love to do. And you've given so much joy, Willie, to so many people over the years. There aren't many people, I would say, that all of us can agree on in this country anymore. We're so divided. But I think you and Dolly may be the last two. <laughs> I love Dolly. <laughs> I was actually interviewing her, and she was talking about Pretty Paper and calling you up and asking if you'd do that song with her and yeah. how much she loved you and was hoping you'd say yes, and you did. So... What uh, you've had a chance to work with so many people. You mentioned your friendship with Frank. There's Dolly. Any stand out to you, Willie, over the course of your career where you said, boy, I can't believe well, course, I'm on those, the same stage? Those two, those two for sure. And uh, I got to work with Ray Price, uh, who was a fantastic singer, and Ray Charles. Um, mm. I've been lucky. So you've done just about everything. Is there anything out there as you look out to the horizon, you say, boy, I still haven't done that and I'd like to try it? I haven't done any skydiving yet. <laughs> no. Does Annie know about this plan? She just no. said no. 
<laughs> Unless she's the one pushing you out of the plane. She might do that. Yeah. I got to ask you one songwriting question, Willie. Um, is there any truth to the legend that you wrote the famous song On the Road Again on the back of a, a air sickness bag somewhere out on the road? Well, yeah, it was at an airplane. I was flying with uh, Sidney Pollock, and they wanted me to write a song. And uh, uh, I, I said, what do you want me to write? He said, well, something about being on the road again. I said, what about this? On the road again? I can't wait to get on the road again. I alone like me. Can't wait to get on. How about that? They said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just That'll like that? It. They asked for it and you <laughs> delivered it? That way. It was that, that easy, wow. really. And so the only thing you had to write it on was the air sickness bag? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Flipped it over and made history, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Threw up and moved on. <laughs> it's got to be cool. One more question for you, Will. It's got to be cool to stand on a stage with, with your son, Lucas, and play with him and also to see the success that he's had. Well, yeah, Lucas and Michael both, they are incredible musicians. And, uh, you know, it's always great to have your kids on stage with you, especially when they're real good. And yeah. These kids are great. Yeah, they're awesome. They're, it's fun to watch, and especially when you hop up there with them. Willie, thanks so much for the time. It's really an honor to talk to you. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you, Willie. Take care. Thank you. today all day. Summer's almost here, and if you're looking for the perfect way to welcome warmer weather, my pal Anthony Contrino is sharing his favorite al fresco meal. Not al roca, but al fresco. We're talking juicy pork milanese, peppery arugula salad, an easy antipasti, along with Uncle Pasti, with olives, and of course, a classic Italian cocktail to wash it all down. Mmm. Summer is just around the corner. It's not one of my favorite seasons, but my birthday's in there, so I'll allow it. Anyway, it is gonna be really nice to be able to dine outside with friends. So today I am whipping up the perfect al fresco meal. I'll be making delicious orange rosemary marinated olives, the juiciest, crispiest pork milanese that you've ever had, topped with a nice fresh salad. And then of course we need a cocktail or two. I'll be making a Negroni and an Americano. Oh, hi, I didn't see you there. Welcome to the new set of Saucy. Let's get cooking. I'm gonna be making some delicious orange rosemary marinated olives. We love olives in my family. We have them out for every holiday as part of an antipasti. I'm gonna be using orange and rosemary because those are two flavors that I like and that work really well together. So first things first, I have two different kinds of olives. My favorite, Cato Vitrano, which are super buttery, and then a little bit more of a pungent flavor with Kalamata olives. I like the two to balance off each other, and they're really pretty when mixed up together later on. For the marinade itself, we'll start by adding some oil. It's about a third of a cup. You can eyeball this into a small saucepan. So first things first, an orange. Any sweet orange will do. This is a plain navel orange and I'm just cutting a few strips off. Then I like to go back with a knife and carefully, don't hurt yourself here, similar to like filleting fish, remove the bitter pith. We don't need any bitter flavor in our marinade over here. So you can see all the white part is gone and you're left with just the beautiful, super fragrant skin. Right into the pot that goes. Take your time. Better off being safe than sorry with this. And the last one into the pot. Don't want this orange to go to waste. So I'm gonna take that sweet, delicious juice 
and we'll add that to the pot as well. That'll add a little bit of sweetness to our olives. Next up, garlic. What, what does this happen every time? Six takes later. I'm gonna grab two cloves. You can buy them peeled already, which will save on the aggravation. Okay, so just thin sliced, eighth of an inch, even thinner if you can, without hurting yourself, into our pot. Then let's add some more flavor. A bay leaf. I'm gonna add a pinch of red pepper flakes. I'm not a big spice person, so I literally just add a tiny little pinch. Last but not least, some fresh rosemary. So I'm gonna cut off a couple of sprigs here and pull off about half of the leaves or just kind of break them. I just like the way it looks when it's in there. It's still gonna permeate that oil. So I'm literally just waiting for the edges to just sort of start to simmer as I'm doing this. It'll go pretty quickly. We're not looking to cook, we're looking to infuse. You'll know it's done when it gets nice and fragrant. Similar when you add garlic and onion to like a saute pan and it's getting there, it's smelling really good already. So you can see it's starting to simmer a little bit. So I'm gonna cut the heat and then simply just pour it right on top of our olives. Make sure you get all of this flavor. Leave no speck of garlic or rosemary behind. Okay, now I'm gonna let this sit out at room temperature for a couple of hours. So every now and then, every time you pass it, just pick it up, give it a tossy turn, zhuzh it up, get those olives coated nice with that oil to help marinate it, and give those olives some time to steep. Good evening from New Orleans. There is breaking news. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Hey guys, welcome today. So happy you're joining us. The U.S. swimming star Katie Ledecky in the house. Eddie, come on out. You're making me cry. This is an incredible moment. Join us every morning on Today. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends in today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Oh, that's so shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. swimming star Katie Ledecky in the house. Eddie, come on out. You're making me cry. This is an incredible moment. Join us every morning on Today. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. If there's one thing that I can eat for dinner every night, it's pork milanese, or any milanese. Chicken, anything, pound it thin, fry it crispy, I'm gonna eat it. I'd probably even enjoy shoe leather if it was fried. So right here I have, from my butcher, you can get these at most supermarkets, some nice, beautiful, thick pork loin chops that are boneless. I'm gonna pound them nice and thin so that every inch of this milanese is absurdly crispy. Get yourself a generous sized sheet of plastic wrap. And this is where the fun begins, guys. This may look a little scary, but I promise you it's not. We're going to butterfly these chops. So, I'm gonna place a chop on the plastic wrap, taking a really sharp chef knife I'm going to find the center and I'm gonna cut it open like a book. Work slowly, deliberate 
steady slices. And this is just to help get it nice and thin. And I'm just slowly going to start peeling it open. And there you go. If you skip this step and just start pounding, you're gonna be there all day and your meat's not gonna be as tender. So truly don't skip that step. Be sure to leave a little slack around so that our chop has room to grow. Get yourself one of these fun toys and go to town. Watch your fingers, don't do what I almost just did. There you have it. It's about a quarter of an inch thick and we have a gorgeous big cutlet now that is for one person. Just keep going. your kids or your boss piss you off today, this is the perfect meal to make at the end of the day. This one's even better. You can do this with chicken breast. I love it with chicken. You can do it with beef. If you don't have time to go to the gym, this is the perfect activity for you. what it feels like to exercise. <laughs> One to go. That looks great. As easy as that. I am going to wipe down, sanitize, clean my hands, and then we're going to dredge these guys up. Okay, now that that's set up, let's start getting these bad boys breaded. So, free them from the plastic wrap. Look how great that looks. Nice and thin. And when cooking, you wanna make sure you're seasoning in layers. You never wanna just finish with salt because it's just sitting on top and doesn't have time to absorb. Also, when cooking, you want to do all of one action at once. It keeps things neater, it's quicker. This is the bulk of the seasoning, so don't be cheap. And get both sides. The last one's always the annoying one, isn't it? Perfect. Now to begin breading. You may notice that there's something here missing, flour. Growing up, whenever my dad made chicken cutlets or milanese, he never used flour. And when I went to culinary school, I was like, "Where? What, what's with the flour? And I've tested it both ways. In this case, it is an extra ingredient, an extra step, and I find it to be completely unnecessary. It actually coats better to this pork if you don't use flour. So while you're probably thinking, I don't know what I'm talking about, I would curse here, but I'm not allowed to anymore. I definitely do. So this is my dredging station. Three very well beaten eggs and two cups of seasoned breadcrumb. Another trick, wet hand, dry hand. So in she goes. Make sure we're nice and well coated. You can see how great a pie dish works for this. It fits well, it has a flat enough surface and it has sides to keep everything in place. Give it a couple of shakes and right into our breadcrumb. Now, use your dry hand 
to start covering it with the breadcrumb. When you get to this point, you can flip it. Make sure you don't miss a millimeter of breadcrumb. Every crevice, breadcrumb, and press it in. We want these to be well coated and super duper crispy. Just like that. And that's ready to be fried. Make sure you press it on, lock it in there. Isn't that cool? This is kind of a fun thing to get the kids involved in too. Put them to work. Dinner was not for free at my house growing up. Thank God I did most of the cooking. My mom's cooking's atrocious. That's a big one. Time to fry them up. I've added about a quarter of an inch of vegetable oil to a pot. When frying, I like to use a neutral oil like safflower, canola, any vegetable oil, because it won't take on any flavor. Have this going over medium high heat. And I know it's ready when I add a pinch of breadcrumb and we get some sizzle action. So you see how it foamed up and it already started darkening? Time to add one of our cutlets. Mm. We're gonna let this fry for about two to three minutes per side until it's deep, golden, gorgeous brown. Keep an eye on the edges of your cutlet I can see it already starting to get nice and golden brown in that little nook, which means it's almost ready to flip. I'm gonna take a sneak peek. Almost there. For me, any cutlet should be on the brink of being burnt for it to be delicious. <laughs> Now just another couple of minutes. Oh yeah. Transfer it to a wire rack. If you put it on paper towels, it's gonna get a little soggy and the breading is gonna start to fall off. Get another one in really quick. And then while it's still hot, Add a nice, generous amount of a flaky sea salt. You can see it melting into that hot oil. Some of it won't melt. It'll add a little bit of an extra crunch and extra seasoning. These cutlets are gonna cook really quickly, so keep an eye on the pan. This is not the time to walk away and start another project. Oh my God. extra crispy for the chef. I have my oven set to the lowest setting. I'm gonna throw these in there to keep them warm. I don't wanna keep them in there too long though, just long enough to make a delicious salad.
best swimming star, Katie Ledecky, in the house. Eddie, come on out. You're making me cry. This is an incredible moment. Join us every morning on Today. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? What are the issues that the party stands for? That seems to be the missing piece here. If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Hey guys, welcome to May. So happy you're joining us. The U.S. swimming star, Katie Ledecky, in the house. Eddie, come on out. You're making me cry. This is an incredible moment. Join us every morning on Today. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Hey guys, welcome to May. So happy you're joining us. The U.S. swimming star Katie Ledecky in the house. Eddie, come on out. You're making me cry. This is an incredible moment. Join us every morning on Today. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. This peppery arugula is the base of my salad, but any good salad needs a killer dressing, and this is mine, my white balsamic dressing. Going to start by adding a couple of tablespoons of just plain old clover honey. This bougie thing looks like a lot of fun, but it's a little messy. This is gonna add just enough sweetness. Some Dijon, which is gonna add more depth of flavor. It's also going to help emulsify this dressing when we add the oil. Get that all in there. A Little bit of salt, about a half a teaspoon, and then about an eighth of a teaspoon of freshly cracked black pepper. I'm gonna whisk this to combine. Make sure you get that honey to dissolve. That looks beautiful. Now that the base of our dressing's ready, I'm going to drizzle in olive oil. Very slowly begin to drizzle in your olive oil giving it time to break up the fat molecules and emulsify. If you can see the oil puddling in the vinegar, that means you're adding too much and it's going to not emulsify properly. I did not sign up for this much cardio today. You can see it already starting to thicken that means that we have a great emulsification. It's a beautiful dressing. Great golden color from the white balsamic and this really good Sicilian olive oil. Mm, gorgeous, gorgeous. Mm, it's perfect, it doesn't need any more seasoning. This is a very simple salad. All I'm going to add to this arugula are some beautiful cherry tomatoes that I'm just gonna have. If you don't have a small utility knife like this, a nice serrated knife, it's a really great kitchen tool. I use it a lot. I'm gonna give this a quick toss. And then add your dressing to taste. This makes more than you need for this, but it stores really well in the fridge in a mason jar or just any sealed container for at least a week. Mm. So all set. All that's left to do is to put the two pieces of the puzzle together. Mm. It smells so good. Okay. These are nice and warm. Let's go with this big guy. Just throw that right onto a plate, and then don't be cheap. Oh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Then, because God forbid I cook something and not put cheese on it.
how delicious does this look? I cannot wait to dig in. I'm kind of thirsty. I think I need to make a cocktail. swimming star Katie Ledecky in the house. Eddie, come on out. You're making me cry. This is an incredible moment. Join us every morning on Today. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around yes. here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring is sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. Uh, celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it! Good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. I'm going to show you how to make probably the most quintessential Italian aperitivo, which is a pre-meal drink, something meant to whet your appetite. And this bitter campari is going to do just that. That is one of the three major components in this Negroni. This drink is equal parts campari, sweet vermouth, and gin, and it is going to punch you in the face. So I'm doing an ounce and a quarter each of these three spirits. This is our sweet vermouth to balance that bitterness just the slightest bit. And we can't forget about the gin. This is a London dry gin that I'm using, then some blood orange. I like to peel it directly into my beaker to catch any oils that come out. And I'm just going to peel off a nice healthy strip. Add some ice. We wanna get this nice and chilled. It's also gonna dilute this the slightest bit. And stir, stir, stir. At least 20 seconds. Really let those flavors combine and let it chill throughout. Perfect. Get yourself some bougie ice. Mmm. So pretty. Then, every cocktail needs a garnish. Another strip of our blood orange skin. Give it a little twist. And then I kind of like to run it on the rim just to get those oils on there. Little extra hint and punch of the orange. Now, if you feel like this is a little too bitter for your palate, we're gonna make its less aggressive cousin, the Americano, which is pretty similar. We're gonna start the same way with our compati, using an ounce and a half this time. And then the sweet vermouth. No gin in this one. So it's not gonna be quite as boozy. Perfect. Same thing. And stir, stir, stir. More bougie ice. <laughs> Isn't that such a beautiful color? Then, finally, we'll top it off with club soda. 
How beautiful that effervescence. Don't forget about our little garnish. Our little straw. There you have it, the perfect Negroni and the Americano. Can't wait to share these with my friends. Here's a pretty color. And a little twist. Thank you. You stir. I like dilutes it a little. Welcome. Delicious. Beautiful. Pork Milanese. Nice. Thank you, Anthony. You're welcome. Oh, with a woman who can drew, truly do it all. We are talking about Drew Barrymore. She can drew it all. She's drew an actress. She's an author. She's an executive producer. She's a talk show host. She sews her own clothes. And now <laughs> she's adding something new to her resume. Editor-in-chief and founder of her own lifestyle magazine. It's called Drew. Good morning. Good morning, darling. I'm so excited to talk about this with you guys first. Um, this is the first time that I have publicly spoken about this yeah. because you really can't probably shouldn't talk about anything before you actually do, <laughs> do it. it. Yes. And that's wise advice. Action does speak louder than words. And this is it. This is the first time I'm I'm getting to Can I see? It, uh, yes. I just want to look Please. while you while we discuss. It's good. It's got good <gasps> stuff. It's, it's glossy. glossy. It's fun. We've been texting. Yes, we have about the magazine because it's so exciting. It's so fun. And you're like, this was one of your childhood dreams. It literally was. I have pictures uh, that I provided. I don't know if they'll come up, but no. uh, yeah, there oh, you yeah. go. So that is me. Why I'm having barbells in my hands is another <laughs> story. But this was you... how I grew up. I <gasps> created wallpaper. Oh from magazine tear sheets all over my bedroom walls, and I still do. And now it's very in fashion for designers and home is to create those big, large-scale mood boards. And I guess that's what I wanted to do when I was a kid. Magazines are such an important part of my yeah. life, such an important part of my education, my travel advice, my design prowess, food recipes. It really is the kind of thing that I am a huge subscriber. I love paper. Yeah, yeah. We're not digital. <laughs> and I want to go harken back to the analog me that has, <laughs> you know, is self-educated. And magazines are a huge part of my education. You talk about, I like how you talk about happiness and joy. Like that's front and center. And I'm thinking you're 40. Are you 46? 46. You're 46. Yes, proudly. And we, I had interviewed Tina Fey a, a week or so ago, and she said she did not find her voice, did not know who she was until 40. Really? So, yeah. So do you feel like you've found that part of you at I this point? I think I always had confidence, yeah. and I watched Pippi Longstocking as a kid, <laughs> and she basically gave me the freeway and the runway to feel like girls could do anything. And I think that I've always known who I was and had that confidence, but I have struggled for self-improvement and to learn and to grow. And I don't think that I should have a talk show or be a part of a talk show or a magazine, honestly, until this point. I think oh. I'm the most well-rounded with still a long way to go and a lot more to learn, but I'm so glad it's at this interval of my life when I feel this um, 
the, the, the work is really paying off. Mm -hmm. There's been so much soul searching. Fun, I never had a problem with. Yeah. <laughs> Joy and optimism, never had a All problem right. with. But something about being 46, I love talking about happiness because I now know that you really have to fight for it, you have to earn it, it is work, but the reward is there's no alternative for mm. me. And I think I found happiness in different ways before, and as you get older, that happiness is found in other ways. Yeah. So I wrote the essay, um, The Pursuit of Happiness mm -hmm. in there, and I think happiness is not this lofty, ridiculous concept, it's a very mature, wise choice. Mm. And it isn't always easy, and it's not always on tap, but if you harness it, it's worth it. Well, speaking of things to be happy about, you're Emmy nominated in your Wait. first year as a talk show host. As are you, as are Look, you guys I always. Look, which, so I'm so excited to be in your company. First of all, year one. Year, year one. one. That's what makes it unique and awesome. I'm gonna tell a quick story yeah. uh, that we, when we started September 2020, election COVID, Black Lives Matter, Supreme Court nominees, very scary time to speak out about anything. Not a lot of people had things to promote. Mm -hmm. People were nervous to even talk about things on television because they didn't want to say the wrong thing. It was a very taboo, uh, intimidating, unprecedented time. Um, and then over the Christmas break, we got a huge focus group feedback. And it, it was rough and it was harsh and it was intense. What Just, you know, what is this show? What, uh -huh. the, I, you know, why... Why is she so darn happy? Like, <laughs> you know, the SNL sketch. But it was yeah. also positive, but it was a confusing time. And it wasn't an easy road. And what I'm really glad about is that somehow we came out the other side and learned a lot in that year, as everyone said we would. Yeah. Um, you talk about finding yourself or gaining, you know, wisdom at a certain point in time. A show takes a lot of evolution and growth. But to, to get that Emmy nomination is so nice because I'm so happy that my bosses feel good mm -hmm. about <laughs> the so journey funny. we went on. I'm yeah. like, yeah. does this mean we, we can we, keep going? Yeah. Okay yeah. It's just relief. Yeah. I'm so happy. And uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't a smooth sale and it wasn't a confidence booster. It was a lot of finding our way in a tough time. And so I'm just so grateful that we didn't totally fail. <laughs> Honestly. You are so Don't funny. Don't you love Drew? She always tells yeah. the truth. Yes. Like, let me just give it to you straight. Truth pill. And over the Christmas break, when we got the focus group back, I was like, Oh yeah. Okay. We're and, and you you just it's important to hear all the things that don't work so you can figure out the things that you Let do. Let me give you a little tip. We don't do focus groups. No. Don't find out. Don't no, bother. Just, just keep going. Well, and you can't change who you are. Yeah, exactly. So you so. stick with your authentic self. You live an authentic life, but you kind of garner what is what people want and need, because I don't think any of us do this ultimately just for ourselves. We're yeah. trying to put something out there in the world for other people. Well, now that you're an expert, you can see we're getting the big wrap. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, oh, and get up. Is, you know, live. I, we started yeah. live. So, yeah, I get it. Thanks, guys. I'm, right. sure, I'm sure their favorite line was, I'm going to tell a story. They were like, <laughs> the Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Hey guys, welcome today. So happy you're joining us. The U.S. swimming star Katie Ledecky in the house. Eddie, come on out. You're making me cry. This is an incredible moment. Join us every morning on Today. Let's go. And good evening from New Orleans. There is breaking news. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope. The COVID vaccines. I know, I know. It's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. 
Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. And we are back with today food this morning. The one, the only Martha Stewart. Martha, Martha, yeah. Martha. We all know she's the queen of decorating, cake baking, <laughs> and gardening. Well, now she's sharing an up close and personal look at her many talents and interesting stories. She's got a new show. I cannot get over this title. Martha gets down and dirty. Take a look. The best use of a chainsaw I ever heard, though. A couple was getting divorced, and they could not decide about what to do with their home furnishings. And the wife just said, okay, well, you take half of everything. And she went away, and her husband used the chainsaw and cut everything in half. So That's it's a feel-good show. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't bode well for the dog. Yeah. Martha, good morning. You're out in uh, your, your, your house out there in the country. We love it. So how'd you come up with this title? I mean, I think we knew you were down and dirty, we deep did down know. inside. But everybody else thinks of you as like the queen well, of clean. Well, I am the queen of, queen of clean inside the house, but out in the garden, it is kind of dirty. You're working in the dirt, right? <laughs> yeah. So it gets me a chance to just, just kind of be myself and, and, uh, and show all the great gardening tips, how to grow things, how to cook things outdoors. And, uh, and today we're grilling all kinds of fantastic uh, sausages, um, which which I know Al Roker would really like. Mm. And the guests on our show are fantastic. We have Kim Kardashian. Tiffany Haddish is a hoot. Mm -hmm. And there's some guy called Al Roker. Oh, Al Roker, Roker you comes on the show, it. too. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I forgot because it was and during the pandemic. But yes, I, we were talking about yep. the, the rub. Yep, and he, and he does a great rub. <laughs> so <laughs> barbecue rub. Barbecue and, rub. They did and say they, it was yeah. Martha down and, and dirty. Bar barbecue rub. Yeah. <laughs> well, Martha, tell yeah, the us show's about these... on Discovery Plus. Yeah. Okay. Tell us about these dogs you're grilling. Like, it, is there an art to it? Oh well, all kinds of dogs. You know, if you're going to have a grilling party, why not make it really interesting? Not just hot dogs, but special all-beef hot dogs, kielbasa, uh, Ooh, a Greek sausage we just found called Ooh. called uh, lukaniko. It's it's a combination of uh, meat and uh, oregano and lemon, mm. and we have beautiful cheddar bratwurst. Oh, These are so yum. pretty. And, uh, and then, of course, don't forget the rolls. The rolls have to be uh, beautifully buttered. Uh, before you put them on the grill, oh, and no. grill make sure yeah. you don't burn stuff. Yeah, you know Al Roker. He's he's also a proponent of not burning stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, if the flame is up high like that, just move the stuff or spray it with a a little spray bottle. But get your your rolls nicely, just slightly charred. Mm -hmm. And the condiments. Oh my gosh, look at all the condiments we have on here: bread and butter pickles, French mustard. Mm -hmm. um, this is the uh, you know the baseball stadium mustard, of course. Mm -hmm. Chopped onions, red relish, green relish, sauerkraut, my favorite, mm. sour cream. Uh, you have um, uh, spicy mustard, tomatoes chopped up, and this is fantastic, a, a beet horseradish mustard. Oh, wow. so, horseradish. And bacon and dill pickles. Yum. And doesn't that make your mouth water? Don't you want Looks one good. of these right now? I wish you were here. Martha, uh-oh, uh-oh, uh yeah. Maybe you ought to close the lid, Martha, just to kind of knock that fire down. Yeah, that's yeah, a good for idea. For one second, you're right. And I love this grill dome. This is a custom colored. You can get it any color you uh -oh. want. I love mm. this. So you, yeah, you can have it match your house, your backyard, whatever. It's a really clever, clever thing. Yeah. Oh, so there let's it goes. Uh, let that hey, Martha, cool down a little bit. Hey, Martha, yeah. what's your per describe how you would prepare your perfect hot dog? What What are your condiments? What do you like on yours? Oh well, let's let's get one right here. Here's a hot dog. And on a buttered bun, and I would put first, I like French mustard, so mm -hmm. I would put a nice mm -hmm. Dijon mustard on. Oh, yum. I love relish, mm -hmm. and I would put relish. Do you know I have a hot dog at every hot dog stand? It's called a Martha dog. What? And, uh, and every place is a little bit different from, yeah, Rutz Hut has a Martha dog, uh, Raleigh's in Fairfield has a Martha what? dog, uh, the great hot dogs, the hot dog place in California in L.A. has a oh, hot Pink's? dog called the Martha dog. Oh, yeah. Pink's, yeah, I have a, does Al Roker have a hot dog at Pink's? I do not, I do you not. You have a perfect Roker. I'm not Martha Stewart, oh, well, come on. I think, I think, I think you should be working on that one, Al, because those are very famous. Uh -huh. And so that's what I have, pickles, and I love bacon on mine too. Oh, I'm wow. going to put a piece of bacon in oh, there. That's a good one. So there there's you go. my hot that's dog. That's a good one. Well, I love and Martha. Martha, <laughs> Martha, one more thing. What do you call them when it gets really crispy, when your dogs get really crispy? 
Oh, Snappies. These snappies. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. And I right. love those. Yeah, um, Rawley's is famous for snappers, as well as Rutt Hut. Rutt's Hut is also oh. famous for snappers. Okay. That really? you get, you know, snaps, snappers, you put in hot oil first. Oh, you know, you, oh, you fry right. them a little What's bit. What's happening to that grill? Martha, that's yeah. the yeah. scene. Okay. 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 Well, I just opened it a little flame going on. Okay. Oh, okay. All, right. all right, Martha, okay. thank you so no, much. No, this is good. <laughs> okay. Hey, all right, all right. Look, Martha, you smoking. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Good morning. Welcome to Today. Start your day with us every morning. Get your daily dose of news on the go with the Today Podcast. <laughs> Boom. And stream today anytime you want. Today, all day. Every day. Wherever you are, today is there. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Let's go. And good evening from New Orleans. There is breaking news. Good morning. Welcome to Today. Start your day with us every morning. Get your daily dose of news on the go with the Today Podcast. <laughs> and stream today anytime you want. Today, all day. Every day. Wherever you are, today is there. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring is sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. Uh, celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it. We're back with two of the funniest people we know, Amy Poehler and Nick Offerman. <laughs> I like, I just like looking at them. Look at uh -huh. them. They're the hosts of NBC's craft competition show, Making It. Back for season three tonight. Take a look. Yeah, look at that face. For your first Faster Craft Challenge, we want to see the most fun version of you in the form of an original handmade toy. This toy can represent you, something you love, or something you used to love as a child. Your toy must have an interactive element. Now, to get you started, here's our world-famous catchphrase. And listen close, because we're only going to say it all the time. <laughs> now, make it! <laughs> I mean, I love it so much. There's so much joy. Amy and uh -huh. Nick, I mean, did you really think this would catch on? You're about to get to season three, Nick. Why do you think people love it so much? Uh, I think, you know, the state of the world in recent years has made everybody want a, any kind of hug they can get their hands on. And this is mm -hmm. a hug in, in the form of a television show. That's also inspiring and fun. I think anybody uh, likes to have their creativity awakened and also watch other people be geniuses with a glue gun. Yeah, Amy, I love it because it's not for meanies. Like, you got to be a nice person. Yeah. Did you set out when you were making the show? Did you say, you know what, let's, let's keep that piece of it out of our competition show? 100%. When we pitched the show to NBC, we were like, there's going to be no tension. Um, and no real stakes. Are you guys in? <laughs> <laughs> but a lot, a lot of glue guns. Yeah. yeah. But Amy, yeah. I mean, you you said because you came on, I think, when the show mm -hmm. launched, and we talked to you, and you were like, "I'm not a crafty person." So no. first of all, have you picked up anything? And second of all, then what? How do you? How did it fit for you? What What drew you to it? Well, honestly, the fact that Nick wanted to do it with me was pretty much the reason why uh, I, I knew it would be uh, s such a great show. But I, I, I kind of represent the non-maker in the show, the person that's curious and interested about process, which I've always been. But 
doesn't even know where to start. And so mm -hmm. this show is for people who feel like they're really advanced makers and then people who are just hoping to get in their garage and try something. And so I represent, I represent those people. <laughs> well, Nick, I know that you're the crafty one, but I love that Amy said the reason that she wanted to do the show because it was with you. But when she called you up initially and said, hey, Nick, will you join me? What did you think? Oh gosh! Well, it's it's like if if our World Series winning team had broken up, and a few years later, the the ace pitcher called and said, "Hey, I know we're not playing ball anymore, but do you want to get together? It's an idea for a show. We'll play catch. Uh, I'll be really funny, and you just follow me around and uh, and and like trim your beard and maybe you know compare glue to paste once in a while." <laughs> and I said, that that sounds like my dream job. You guys go way back. Mm -hmm. I mean, we know about Parks and Rec, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But I was really intrigued because mm -hmm. you, you two met in the 90s. Mm -hmm. Amy, what was your very first impression of Nick? I had an amazing first impression of Nick because he was doing a play at the time because Nick used to do a ton of kind of off-Broadway Chicago theater. And he was playing Satan, I believe, or <laughs> Satan-like person. <laughs> <And>, um, <laughs> In That'll some kind of play. So he had dyed hair that I feel like was shaped into scary, into some kind of scary, scary um, configuration. And so, you know, Nick has like an incredible range of the warmest giggle uh, and mm -hmm. the warmest person. Mm -hmm. But he can also look very scary. <laughs> and so I met him when he was scary. But, you know, I approached him slowly and we became <laughs> <laughs> well y'all made magic so many times parks and rec as savannah mm -hmm. mentioned was such a big hit you guys get together we've seen some virtual get togethers so i'm sure people are wondering you know can we can we see do we expect any more parks and rec in our future i mean i feel like nick and i are probably the most eager and willing to do anything <laughs> We don't know how to play it cool. So, yeah, we'll do it anytime. I mean, I can't speak for you, Nick, yep. but. Call me. What say you, Nick? Call me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, any, any, any time we can get back in that boat. Uh, I love boats. I love fishing. <laughs> Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> You're a woodworker. You could probably make the boat, yeah. honestly. Yeah. I could. Amy and Nick, it's always a pleasure. Thank you so much. Good morning to you, buddy. How did you become the quiz master? Well, I'm not sure I am the quiz master, to tell you the truth. Uh, it was an opportunity for me to uh, host this show with my brother. He and I are kind of having these side conversations in the middle of this competitive game show by these college students. But what hooked me was the fact that these kids are playing for college scholarships. Thanks mm -hmm. to Capital One, there's a million dollars in scholarships. Everybody leaves something. Mm -hmm. The winners win four-year full-ride scholarships. I've seen the impact of scholarships. That's kind of why I got involved. I don't think I'm a very good game show host. I studied the <laughs> film of Richard Dawson, Pat Sajak, some of the great hosts. It didn't really help me all that much, so I was out there doing the best I can. He hey, studied game tape. I love it. Hey, hey, Peyton, there's something in the water at the Manning House. Your mom, Archie, and your, I mean, your mom, your, your mom, Olivia, your dad, Archie, and then all the kids, you, Cooper, and Eli. A lot of people don't know Cooper. We know you and we know Eli. Tell us a little bit about your older brother. Yeah, Cooper's got a great quick wit. Uh, he's the older brother in the family, uh, has thick skin, likes to dish it out, but can take it as well. So he and I have always had a fun relationship. We kind of had an agreement early in our lives that I would help him be a little more serious and he would help me lighten up a little bit. So that's been a good partnership. And uh, he and I spent eight days together out in Los Angeles filming this show. We haven't done that since we were in high school together. So it was fun for us. But the kids are what made it so special. They were super smart. They were funny. They like to dish it back out to Cooper, which I love. And, uh, knowing that these these kids are playing for life changing scholarships was really cool to witness the impact it can make on them, on their families, maybe allowing another sibling to go to college. Hmm. It was really worth the time and experience. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope. The COVID vaccines. I know, I know, it's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So, it's more important than ever to make a plan. 
Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. swimming star Katie Ledecky in the house. Eddie, come on out. You're making me cry. This is an incredible moment. Join us every morning on Today. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? What are the issues that the party stands for? That seems to be the missing piece here. If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Let's go. And good evening from New Orleans, there is breaking news. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. It has been 15 years since model and actor Leslie Bibb had us laughing in the Will Ferrell hit Talladega Nights. After that, went on to play journalist Christine Everhart in the Iron Man franchise. Well, now Leslie is part of another superhero world in the new Netflix show Jupiter's Legacy. She plays Lady Liberty, a member of the Union of Justice who is fighting evil by day and keeping her family together at night. He already knows that he screwed up and he let you down, he let the utopian down. I just don't understand how rubbing his nose in it is gonna make it better. He's not a puppy, okay? He needs to learn about responsibility and accountability. We're not just raising a son. Yeah, well, we're also raising a human being. Mm, Leslie, good morning. Ooh. Hi, guys. How are you? We're doing great. great. You know, this is not your average superhero movie, if you will. It really dives into the topics of, you know, family, legacy, what we want to teach our children. Tell us about yes. this one. Um, it's called, you know, it's Jupiter's Legacy. It's about this group of superheroes, and it sort of spans a from the 1920s to present day, which I think is really cool about the show. Mm -hmm. um, and it's it's a it covers a bunch of different things to the show about doing the right thing, uh, how great power creates great responsibility. But it also what I find interesting is you have this family trying to keep the superhero the superhero family together mm -hmm. while trying to save the world at the same time. And your character's name is Lady Liberty. So, I mean, I'm, I'm yes. thinking about the fight scenes. And I, I thought it was very interesting that you kind of had a different take on how Lady Liberty should fight, right? Yeah, it was so funny because I, when we, I remember one of the big, we had this hilltop fight that's massive and we shot it for like two weeks. And I was sort of looking at what they were doing for me and it was sort of prim and proper mm. and... I don't know. It didn't feel, it felt ladylike, I guess would be the word. And so I was asking the stunt coordinator and I was like, I, I'm just curious why you're doing this. And he's like, well, your name's Lady Liberty. And I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> I was like, this is, she's a mother. Superhero. She's trying to, yeah. And, but also I think the core to her and to go back to what creates the show is that she is a woman who is trying to, keep a marriage together, mm -hmm. keep her family together, have a, a nine to five job, which happens to be, you know, seven days a week, you know, 24 hours a day, 365 of keeping the world safe. Mm -hmm. And so, and I was like, you know, this woman is a lion mm -hmm. and she's gritty and she will fight tooth and nail for anything she loves. So the minute I said that he changed everything. And I was like, also a weird fun fact about her is that in the twenties, she was the captain of her wrestling team. Oh. And I was like, and this is a woman who, <laughs> yeah, I was like, and also too, she's a woman who in 1929 was a journalist and chose a career in a, in a newspaper room, uh, versus, you know, being a stay at home mom mm -hmm. and she became a mom later in life. So, um, I, I don't know. I just thought it was important to sort of make her a little messy and yeah, a little a blurry there. around the yeah, edges. Yeah. Yeah. Also too, I think you can sort of look at a woman and be like, Oh, well, you're going to be in this box. And it's mm -hmm. like, 
you know, it's 2021. Ladies wear a lot of hats and, <laughs> and we can tick off a lot of boxes. I mean, that's what I think. Yeah. So what has, has quarantine? I know when, when, you, when you were filming in Australia, there's that whole quarantine process going on down there. Well, we, we shot this in Toronto, and I'm in Australia doing a different TV show oh, right now. Okay. I'm doing this comedy um, with Melissa McCarthy and Ben Falcone. Nice. It's called God's Favorite. Yeah, it's called God's Favorite Idiot. It's super fun, but we shoot in Australia. So I was in quarantine for two weeks in Sydney, and um, it was intense. <laughs> and... Um, no windows that opened oh, no and drinking, right? uh wow. i chose not to drink al because i thought it would be depressing mm. to wake up hungover <laughs> in a room with windows that didn't open and i am glad thought. i made that life change no fresh air <laughs> i also thought that maybe i had been um hitting the sauce a little bit too hard mm. during the like, yeah. pandemic yeah you know i mean i'm sure everybody was drinking and i was like Bib, you've got to pull your, you know, you got to pull <laughs> it together. together. So, yeah. yeah so we, I used the two weeks. I, I got them to deliver this um, treadmill to my, my room and they can't bring it in your room. So they leave it in the hallway and then you put on your mask and I dragged it into the room and it was like this collapsible uh, treadmill that my hand to God, it was like a Barbie treadmill <laughs> uh, my, I, my legs hung off the end of it. Oh, I would walk on it and my leg would fly off. And I was like, oh, I'm going to kill myself. Oh, my and then gosh. I'm going to have a broken leg oh, and I will not be able to. Leslie, you're such a exactly. delight to talk to. <laughs> Jupiter's Thank Legacy you is streaming on Netflix right now. Have the best day. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks so much, Oh, my Leslie. God, you too. Bye-bye, guys. Okay. The soothing rhythm of nature. The certainty of growing things. The kind of faithfulness that whatever life does, whatever, and I think over the last year of the pandemic, this has been a very powerful, that however difficult things are, there is, a, there is a surety that things will grow and they will flower and they will die. And that's fine. That's okay. That's part of the rhythm. Life endures. It happens. Yeah. yeah which is incredibly grounding at a moment when most of us feel like so much is out of control. It's connecting you with, with things that feel like they matter. You don't even have to explain why they matter because they just do. And they, and they also are real. You can't fake it. Monty Don has been Britain's most famous gardener for decades, hosting BBC Gardener's World for the last two from his home at Long Meadow near the Welsh border. Hello, welcome to Gardener's World. The show now available in America, seeing its highest viewership in 10 years. It's exactly the escape we all needed. That, that pace of life, which is changing all the time, but at its pace, not yours, not the pace of modern life. And the deep rhythm of it that connects the seasons is spiritually very rewarding. As well as fun, it's nice, it's good, you know, it's easy. It's not, it's not a complicated thing. For Monty, his career in gardening sprung from a deep depression after closing his jewelry business with his wife, Sarah. Working in a garden outside really has uh, results that very often pharmaceutical uh, efforts don't. And I think that everybody can improve their well-being, if you like, if not their mental illness. So you can improve your mental health by working in a garden. And my goodness, we all need that. Monty is joined every Friday night in prime time by his two popular co-stars. There's Nellie and Patty. Meanwhile, stuck at home, we had all become gardeners. So these are some of my seedlings. So I think these are kaleettes maybe, or this is kale. Didn't label them, rookie mistake. That's supposed to be salad. This is supposed to be lettuce. With varying degrees of experience and success, Monty just pops these out. And while it's a global language, our connection with the great outdoors, Monty observes, is culturally pretty different. And what struck me was the relationship with nature and wilderness and with gardens. You have such impressive wilderness. Mm -hmm. You know, you have 
the amazing mountains and deserts and lakes and rivers, you know, they're all bigger and, and there's just more of them and the distance. Are... So there's a disconnect with your back garden and that. If you want to immerse yourself in nature, you can do a journey and, and be in as wild a state I as I go anyone hiking, in the world. right. Yeah. I get out, I leave my house. Yeah, you see, you talk about hiking. We go for a walk. We take the dogs for a walk. We go, you know, I go out the gate and go out across some fields. You go hiking and you, you know, you. And we wear spandex. Yeah, so we, yeah, I yeah, know, yeah. the whole so, thing. And that sort of, in some ways, that's wonderful. In lots of ways, it's wonderful. But it sort of makes your back, your yards redundant. When you were in America, mm. biggest difference. Well, I suppose the, the obvious difference is the, the sort of archetypal suburban American front garden. Mm -hmm. These lawns running seamlessly down to the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. And the whole British idea of a garden is somewhere that is private and hedged in. And you don't go into it unless you're invited in. Whereas in America, hey, hi. Hi, I'm here. <laughs> Look at me. I'm the same as you. It's very much, that's my MO, kind of, yeah. on, a, on a regular yeah. basis. Yeah. Whereas we say, hello, have we been introduced? <laughs> Do you think there's kind of, there's going to be an American gardening renaissance? Yes. Kind of on, we're on yes. the cusp of that. Absolutely. And not just a renaissance, I think a genuine naissance, a birth. <laughs> I think that all the great things that we love about America, the mm -hmm. energy, the optimism, mm -hmm. this sense of making it happen because you want it to happen, um, can be applied to gardening. And optimism is central to his BBC show Big Dreams Small Spaces, also available in the US. It's a makeover show with very British sensibilities. People have bonkers ideas, and my favorite two things that you do are when people say, you know, I really want to make this model thing and put this moss in here, yeah. and you say, lovely. That, that sounds like a wonderful idea. And the other thing, when people fall in love with tropical plants that are entirely inappropriate for their setting, yeah. You tell them such, and three months later, they have planted that plant. Yeah, yeah. And you go back and they've ignored everything you yeah. said. That's absolutely right. It's, <laughs> I share all that. I mean, I, I really, the, the thing about Big Dreams is obviously, what, is that it, it's based around ordinary people doing extraordinary things within the context of the, I mean, yes. the more wacky, the better. Right. But actually, some of the most moving ones, for me, have been when people have, done something very modest, but it's been big for them. It's not a race, it's not a competition. And now a new generation is digging in. A club moss, I have a club moss here. Greetings, take a look at this succulent. Last year on social media, updates and tutorials, even the dawn of the plant fluencer. As especially in the rain, they do go over quite quickly. And for Monty, that meant a younger, more diverse, more global fan base. I think what's changed because A, the whole idea of the ecosystem, of ecology, of climate change are pressing and direct and immediate. And gardens are an expression of that, inevitably. And we care a lot about that as well, a generation. It's your and so you should. You know, I mean, one of the, increasingly I see my role in life is to empower and enable your generation to do something about it. Right. Not just talk about it or avoid it. And secondly, I think that you've, you've sort of gone sideways at it. So for example, who would have thought five years ago that houseplants would be probably the biggest oh. thing in gardening? Right. Nobody. Yes. And so, so what you've done is said, okay, we don't have a garden, let's bring it indoors. There's the internet. You now can, can talk to each other, you have access, yeah. you can show pictures, you can do Instagram. We had none of that. A whole tranche of the population have a very different relationship with their garden because that is their outdoors. That is That's their it. relationship to nature. It's not seen as a job or a chore or a duty. It's seen as something that, the, that can give to them as well as them do to it. And I just think that that gets us back to the basic elements of humanity. It's who we are, it's what we do, and that is empowering. And luckily, we've got Monty, Nelly, and Patty too, on both sides of the Atlantic, there to lead us. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Good morning, welcome to Today. Start your day with us every morning. Get your daily dose of news on the go with the Today podcast. <laughs> Boom. And stream today anytime you want. Today, all day. Every day. Wherever you are, today is there. 
some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? What are the issues that the party stands for? That seems to be the missing piece here. If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends of today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Oh, boom. That's just shop today with Joe Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day Kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. And food for thought, arriving in the U.S. as a refugee is certainly a difficult transition, and the pandemic has made that adjustment even more challenging. But one nonprofit called World Relief Seattle is offering some refugees a glimmer of home in a community garden, helping them grow right here in America. Take a look. Wow, thank you. Welcome to Paradise Parking Plots. Once a neglected parking lot on the outskirts of Seattle, this community garden is now host to 44 plots tended by refugee families from 23 different countries. This is a community garden for refugee and immigrant communities who wanted to grow food from their countries and they missed seeing that at their local grocery stores. Tamina Martelli is the program manager for World Relief Seattle, a refugee resettlement organization that built and maintains the garden. She's also no stranger to the struggles faced by the family she helps. I came to this country from Bangladesh. I was actually underage and I was living with this American family in a very rural part of Idaho and I was kind of like a Tootsie Roll in a marshmallow factory. I was one of the only dark people in this entire town. To live in a place that is very, very different often takes time and it takes patience and it takes kind of that resilience. I have worked in refugee resettlement related things, kind of creating that type of thing for the last 25 years. Prem Adhikari, a Bhutanese refugee, has found solace and sustenance here throughout the pandemic, growing vegetables from her homeland. So this one, we call in our language, it is chukuruke, uh, but I never found in grocery store in America. We eat every time freezer before, but when I start my gardening, I eat the fresh vegetables. The pandemic did not stop the garden from hosting its Refugee Youth Summer Academy for ages K through 8. The kids learn about environmental science and work on their English skills. We're doing some online kind of virtual learning, but we're still doing a portion at the garden, which has been a highlight for the kids to be able to get out of their apartments and to come here. You can look at different types of vegetables, plants, flowers, and you can just learn a lot of things. For example, they, we, we can learn about bees pollinating. So what happens when flowers become pollinated? It turns into fruits. That's right, high five. So smart. The summer program also employs interns from immigrant backgrounds. 17-year-old Risa Suho, a Filipino immigrant, says she was placed in special ed classes when she first came to the U.S. because she wasn't in lockstep with her classmates. When you're told that you're special ed because you can't keep up with other kids, you don't think like, it's the education system failing me, it's the thought that I'm failing myself. It's super important, especially for these younger children, to see someone who's kind of looks like them and can relate to their experience. Refugees are often incredibly resilient because of the so many different things that they have had to go through. Often I will have gardeners tell me, my plants don't know there's a pandemic. Having the power to grow your own food, a virus can't take that away. And that's kind of what we're working towards is providing solutions that are sustainable over time. Nice. And this amazing program is not ending with the fall harvest. World Relief Seattle is piloting a new winter course for refugee gardeners, too. You can find more about the program on today.com. It's good. Good for the kids, too.
Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope. The COVID vaccines. I know, I know. It's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring has sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. Oh, we're celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it! For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. We were not but a few steps into Central Park's ramble when... This guy right here. Yeah. And he's a what? White-throated sparrow. Until that moment, I assumed all sparrows dressed alike. So these sparrows are part of kind of the first big wave of migrants that are going to be on their way through the area. And this is a good, good place to see them. We are with Cornell University ornithologist Andrew Farnsworth, a sort of Bill Nye of birds, if you will. Did it surprise you in the last year as COVID and the pandemic took over that people, it seemed like, went crazy for birds? It was not a surprise. This kind of uh, situation where people want to be a part of nature, and especially in a time when there's a lot of emotional challenge and a need to reconnect with something, anything. And the connection with birds, because they are beautiful, they sing, they do cool things. Like that robin you shrewdly observe hanging around all winter. Turns out, some are true frequent flyers. There are some that are residents here, but there are also birds that migrate to New York that spend the winter. There are birds that breed here that leave New York and disappear for the winter. So even though it looks like robin is always here all the time, there's tremendous flux in this species. Farnsworth has traveled the world observing, studying birds. An avian ally, it seems sometimes the birds came to him. Oh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> That is just a great looking bird. I'm sorry, have we seen the warbler? I'm a little high from that. <laughs> Warblers are the epitome of spring migration. Bird watching can be mesmerizing. Great way to engage and also disconnect both. I like that phrase, engage and disconnect. Easy enough to see why so many recently flocked to this pastime, like Sheldon Goodrich. What does it do for you to come out and watch? Uh, it's, it's, it's peaceful. It's, it's, I mean, especially now in the spring, the sounds of the birds, um, sometimes just sitting and hearing the water, hearing the birds, watching the behavior, it's, it's, it's peaceful. But for birds, the world is not as welcoming as it once was. How are our friends, the birds, doing these days? That's a good question. It does vary by species, but if we think about bird populations as a whole, in the last 50 years, there have been precipitous declines. Birds are, in fact, the proverbial canary in the coal mine of the environment. The North American bird population is down by 3 billion since 1970. If we're thinking about birds as uh, indicators of our environment, what does 3 billion birds lost say about the challenges our ecosystems are facing around the planet? Nearby, a massive barred owl has been perched for months. I 
check her when I can, and most of the time she's there. Isn't that something? Oh, it's great. It's great. As if to remind us that birds are a cherishable, but also perishable, gift of nature, not to be taken for granted. And I've been listening to a chorus of birds this morning. Mm. House wren. <laughs> On cue. Could you hear it? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And for people who want to get into this, there are so many sites. Cornell, for instance, has this amazing ornithology department. They have a great eBird website. You can get into it. I've seen one for the state of Minnesota. There are all kinds of them. To help you take little tiny, tiny steps into this amazing, amazing avian world. It's, mm -hmm. it's just terrific. I feel more peaceful just after yeah. that story. I wonder yeah. if the birds are on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Al, do you know the difference between a bird watcher and a birder? Uh, no. Bird watcher, they say, is just somebody who just observes birds, mm -hmm. but a birder is somebody who will travel to go look at birds. Oh, mm. right. So I guess well, you're they a keep birder. lists. A lot of these folks keep lists, and they want to make sure, oh, I haven't gotten the something something sapsucker yet. Right. So they, ah. you know, take off to go Seek find it. Yeah. Something something sapsucker. Sap right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Our local birder, Harry yeah. Smith. Yeah. Yeah. The last six months, bird I've seen watcher, so many bird, bird watchers. Bird watcher. Oh, yeah. Do you feed the birds when you're out there? Do you bring some crumbs? Is that allowed? You know, I asked I asked Farnsworth about bird feeders, and he said it's okay. Oh, it's and okay. there are a lot of places, actually, in Central Park where people kind of spread crumbs oh, and yeah. stuff. Okay. But I, I don't know if that was allowed or not. Thank you, Harry. Uh -huh. We spent a lot of time indoors lately, so why not get out and explore? Well, this morning's influence her is a nature lover who is sharing her passion. Rue Mapp is the creator of Outdoor Afro, a nonprofit that encourages black Americans to embrace the great outdoors. She's already inspired thousands to do it, including Miss Oprah Winfrey herself. If time and money were not an issue, what would you really be doing? And I opened my mouth and my life fell out. I said I'd probably start a website to help black Americans connect with nature. And it was like the world opened up. At 37 years old, Rue was raising three kids and finishing up a college degree when she started a blog called Outdoor Afro. What is Outdoor Afro? I grew up with such an incredible connection to nature and recognized how it had improved my life. But as I continued to get out into nature experiences away from cities, I didn't see enough people who looked like me. And I certainly didn't see us represented in the pages of the glossy magazines that highlight the outdoors. So I started that blog from my kitchen table in 2009. Today, more than a decade later, that blog has turned into a national nonprofit organization with networks in 30 states, with 40,000 people participating and growing. We do that through a leadership team of folks that we train to connect people to nature and to really kind of help people get their nature swagger back. Ooh, nature swagger. I like that. I have to tell you, I'm sitting here thinking about my childhood and growing up. As far as, let's say, going to national parks or some of those kinds of things, I don't remember us really doing that. We have to really uh, rethink nature, right? Like nature is not only in these hallowed national parks. It's right in your own neighborhood. Outdoor Afro brings people together for all types of activities. How to camp, how to fish, how to kayak, you know, those skills. But then there's also the community where you can go out and you can be surrounded by people who are learning right along with you. Yeah. When did it resonate with you I think this is going somewhere. I could see the place that Outdoor Afro could step in and fill some of the gaps that I saw. We are diversity within the diversity. You know, a friend of mine, she's like, Rue, just, just step out and the net will appear. A net she has counted on since her 20s after climbing a mountain for the first time. It is a powerful metaphor and that, that's exactly what it became for me. At the moment where I was about to give up, my instructor leans over and he says, Rue, trust your feet. That's when I knew that nature was a healer and a teacher. In 2010, Rue was part of the think tank that inspired Michelle Obama's Let's Move campaign. All you kids grow up healthy. She continues to work with the California State Parks Commission and recently took Oprah hiking earlier this year. It was so perfect 
to get out there with Oprah and to talk about the history of Redwoods. Those trees tell a story of rebirth and regeneration that I feel all people can connect in and relate to. I've done several interviews now with experts and when I ask them how to find peace in the middle of what feels like a stormy situation in this country, uh, one of the top experts said, you know what? Look to nature, soak up the sun, you know, just breathe. I always say that you go out in nature and the trees don't know that you're black. The birds are gonna sing no matter how much money is in your bank account. The flowers are gonna bloom no matter what your gender is or whether or not you're a Republican or a Democrat. It is truly an equalizer. There's just so much going on in the country right now. How do you, with what you do, wrap your mind around all of this? And I ask myself, like, what is it that I need to be doing right now? How do I show up? Rube showed up by organizing and leading healing hikes. It's about people getting out and really finding that healing for themselves. There's a whole range of emotion, trauma, discord that's happening. And we have to still be present for our families. We still have to take care of ourselves. And so I really want people to turn to nature to get the restoration and the healing that they need. So true. By the way, anyone is welcome to join Outdoor Afro on their adventures. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? What are the issues that the party stands for? That seems to be the missing piece here. If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Good morning. Welcome to Today. Start your day with us every morning. Get your daily dose of news on the go with the Today podcast. <laughs> and stream today anytime you want. Today, all day. Every day. Wherever you are, today is there. And good evening from New Orleans. There is breaking news. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you what you must know. The biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. On a frosty winter morning, Alice Lewick is suiting up. You feel warm enough? Yeah. You want an extra pair of gloves? Alice may be dressed for the sledding hill, but instead she's headed to Hickory Hill Nature School in Kennett Square, Pennsylvania. All right, can we hop this? Woohoo! It's what's called a forest kindergarten where the children are outside all day, rain or shine, even during the recent snowstorms. Stacy Gummy started the school five years ago. There are days I have to imagine where it is freezing, sleet, rain, or on the other end of the spectrum, it can get really humid and hot. Do the kids complain? No. Children are, are very resilient. We all know that everybody says it all the time. Here we really realize they're resilient, but we have to start off warm and we have to have the right gear. Alice began last fall in virtual kindergarten. Her mom, Rebecca, has a health condition that made in-person classes too risky. Tell me what it was like there in the beginning trying to get her to sit in front of a computer. She just wasn't getting the joy that I think she would have been getting in the classroom if we were able to do that. She just wants to be out in the world like, like so many little kids. A friend tipped Rebecca off to Hickory Hill and in November, Alice was one of the few to get off a long waiting list filled with parents looking for a safer alternative to in-person school, one that didn't involve sitting in front of a computer. We had a wait list of over 40 children and we have 12 spots 12 per day. Spots. Have you ever had any cases of COVID or had to shut down? None. 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 Nope, it hasn't even touched us. Forest kindergartens are getting new attention during the pandemic, but they started in Denmark in the 1950s and are popular across Europe. Ready? Eggs under there. Let's show her. Let's see. Look. 
And oh, you can wow. see they've gotten a lot bigger. They might be salamander. We're not positive. I have to ID it still. So this is not teacher-led. This is child-led. We asked them inquiry questions, and based on that, they follow their interests. What did this park come from? And there's so many studies now that show when a child follows their interests, they retain that information much more readily. Nature preschools and kindergartens in the U.S. triple in the past three years. The increase coming as children are spending half as much time outside as their parents did. Many kindergarten teachers are saying kindergarten is now first grade. What we learned in first grade is now learned in kindergarten. So that play is out the window mm. and it's tough. I think reading and writing and all that comes very naturally to children because it's fun to learn. However, we are working on life skills. These children are going to be resilient and able to go into a school and communicate with adults wonderfully, with, other, with their peers wonderfully, and learn to critical think. What are they doing? So they're driving their cars. Oh, they're driving cars, mm -hmm. of course. But I look at this as they are learning to communicate, work together. Yeah. A big component of four schools, risk taking. Go backwards. Oh, and pull all goodness. your weight. So this is this is a skill that we have to teach. And they're so fearless. Outdoor play that's building a valuable skill set. Climbing trees, test their balance and motor skills. We are here to get to hear the sap running inside of it. They're learning to recognize patterns in the animal tracks around the school. Uh, a deer And learning to share in my favorite, the mud kitchen. Can I have some of those ingredients? Yeah. Those muddy clothes, they might be the only downside to the parents we spoke to at pickup. I saw you pull up and you've got a whole organized system. You take the muddy clothes, take those off. Yep. <laughs> you must be used to this by now. Yep, they come home completely drenched and covered in mud almost every single day. They love it. The smile after Alice's first day of school, making it all worth it. I texted Stacey a picture of her face the second she got in the car and I said, I have not seen this face since March. It makes me just feel such deep gratitude for the fact that she has it back and has had it since. Welcome to our Today All Day special, The Upside. I'm Craig Melvin. The Upside is all about uplifting people and stories that show the true grit of the human spirit. And after spending an amazing two weeks at the Tokyo Olympics, we couldn't help but think about the power of sports. So today we're going to shine a light on how sports changes lives, helping folks overcome obstacles both on and off the field. Now, traditionally, the sport of rowing isn't known for its diversity. While talent is everywhere, access is not. But that didn't stop the students of St. Benedict's Prep in Newark, New Jersey. With the help of a dedicated coach, they changed all that. And as you'll see, the school has a, a bit of a habit of turning tradition on its head. Spending a day at St. Benedict's Prep in Newark, New Jersey will leave you nothing short of inspired. You're a winner. You're a winner. Go. 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 Heart and hustle are everywhere. Thanks on three. One, two, three. Thanks. On campus and four and a half miles off. Yes, you know, that's what I want. On the Passaic River. You know you're making a change if it feels uncomfortable. That's where you'll find Coach Craig White. I graduated from St. Benedict's. I live in Newark. I've lived in Newark my whole life. Uh, what makes St. Benedict's Prep different is everything. And he's not kidding. The students take charge here. So when one asked him to start a crew team, he had no choice but to take it up with the headmaster, Father Leahy. And I told him, I said, no, a crew's too expensive, Greg. We can't do crew. One day I was walking around the property, walked through a door and tripped over an erg. So I called Craig. I said, Craig, what the heck is the erg doing here? Oh, somebody just gave it to me. You're up some story, right? The ergs kept multiplying. And then one day I look across my room in the monastery, just thinking, eight-man shell. Craig. He just ignored me. So now we have a, you're here doing a story on the crew team. What started as a leap of faith is now a 10 year success story. We're consistently getting higher and higher and higher and higher up the rankings. Our kids this year, they advanced to the semifinals at Stotesbury Cup for the first time in, in a decade. When, like, I never really imagined that I could be a part of something so big. When I got to the team, I was just like surprised that 
wow, this actually exists. And like, it was really one of the first things that I, I could dedicate myself to. That dedication got Yamil, Jaden, and Alvaro a ticket to U.S. Rowing's Olympic Development Program. And now, they're dreaming bigger than they could have ever imagined. My dream one day is to make the Olympics. I would love to go to the Olympics. My dream is to make the Olympics. If one of my kids is on the Olympics, I'm probably gonna break the television you know, screaming and throwing stuff, but it's it's great. Do we have a future Olympian in this group? Yes. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. While gold medals would be nice, Coach White says it's the character building on and off the water where the real magic happens. Every time I have to do something hard, I like think about it. Like, I've been on the ERG for like 90 minutes straight before. I just think about that and be like, okay, I can do this. If I can do that, if I can do 90 minutes on the ERG, I can definitely do this. What we do on the water every day without question changes lives. When the kids come to us and they're a part of the team, they change for a couple of reasons. One, first off, they learn and they understand that I have power to make my life better. It's not just about the sport, you know? It's about, am I making myself better? Uh, not just interpersonally, but am I becoming a better athlete, holistically better? Is my technique improving? Are my grades improving? Is my relationship with my family improving? And Every generation of kids, every year, they raise the bar, and they do that themselves. But they'll tell you, none of this would be possible without Coach White. He's like the guy. You know? He's just the guy. He's just he, a big he, guy. He does, a, he does a lot for us. He sacrifices a lot for He's us. He's like a, kind of like a second father to me. These kids, these kids are so grateful for everything. They're grateful for each other. They're grateful for the experience and you could literally ask them to move, move mountains, and they'll do it. From changing lives to changing the world of rowing to recognize the value of diversity in the sport, Coach says he's just getting started. The rowing community in our country in particular struggles. Um, it struggles to be able to diversify the sport. You know, our kids get hooked the minute that they get in the boat. So all we have to do is to provide access, you know, open a door. And then once the kids walk through it, they want to do it every day. I want these kids to have whatever they want. I want them to be able to grow into the world. They have the grit, they have the intelligence, they have the work ethic. So to be able to share myself and my family and my time with these kids, to be able to watch them grow, to be able to do what was done for me to another generation of, 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 of young people, What else is there, you know? For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring is sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. Uh, celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it! The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? What are the issues that the party stands for? That seems to be the missing piece here. If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Skateboarding made its Olympic debut this year, but it's a 46-year-old newcomer and mom of two who has everyone talking, known by her alter ego auntie skates or be roy's uplifting and inspiring skating videos have gone viral on tiktok proving she's not your average auntie 
When I get on a skateboard, it is the most liberating feeling I've ever experienced. And whatever problems that I'm having in my life, they just go away. Yay! <laughs> and when I get in a, in a sari and I start flying in the bowl, it's just really fun. I feel very lucky that I found skateboarding. I could have lived my whole life and never found it. Meet Orby Roy, also known as Auntie Skates on social media. She's a 46-year-old mother of two who started to skateboard just three years ago. When I started skateboarding as a family, I started an Instagram account just to track our progress for fun and feel good about us as a family skateboarding together, and it made me really happy. Then in January of 2021, it was a particularly dark period for, I think, a lot of people with COVID, and everybody just seemed depressed. People weren't even hiding it anymore, and myself included. I think that, that mental health, everybody's mental health was suffering. So I created Auntie Skates as a way to spread joy and positivity. I started a TikTok account. I had never even been on TikTok before, and I took a character, Auntie, and I just started posting really fun, uplifting videos. I had created the character Auntie some time ago in improv, and I may or may not have been disciplining my children with that accent. Hello everybody, it's Auntie. I'm out in the cold weather in Canada to do a rock to fakey. First try, ready? That was one piece of it. And the other piece of it was, I, I was getting on Instagram more and I started following young South Asian women and I started to notice that they were complaining often about auntie. And every culture has that toxic person in their lives, the person that tries to bring them down, the, the person that's always judging them, you know, the person that says, why aren't you married yet? And every culture has that, my culture included. So why not be the person that builds people up? And that's why Auntie Skates was created, specifically. And it wasn't just her age that made her stand out in the skate park. As a South Asian woman, I do wear traditional dress often for special occasions, weddings. Any chance I can to wear a sari, I will wear it. A sari is a traditional Indian outfit that women wear, and it's a long piece of cloth that you wrap around yourself. It comes in really bright, vibrant colors. I like to have fun as a skateboarder. I like to have fun as a mom. And I took Auntie Skates a little bit further, and I put Auntie in a sari, and I skated the bowl. Orby didn't realize the impact that she would have on others. It was the comments that people were leaving from the 40-year-old man who used to skate as a kid and bought a board because of me to the young Indian girl in, in, in a village in India who said, if you can do it, I can do it. It resonated with so many people in so many different ways. Roy was always someone that took risks, even when she was a young girl. My parents are immigrants. They came to this country in the 60s. And I think when they came to this country, they had culture shock. They didn't really feel comfortable raising a daughter in a new, more liberal country. And I think what happened was they kind of doubled down on their old school values. They were doing what they thought was best for me. And they were setting some standards based on their own fears. and. The great thing about my parents is that they learned from their mistakes. Yes, I got a computer science degree. Yes, I worked on Wall Street. But that day that I called my father and told him I was walking away from this job and he supported me and my mom supported me, I knew that I would always have my parents' support no matter what crazy thing I did. And with Auntie Skates, the fact that I was doing skateboarding in the first place. They were behind me immediately. Sadly, Roy lost her beloved father, Shamit, this year. I've always leapt before I looked, and the reason why I've been able to do that is because of my father's support. He always had my back, and he would gently guide me. Family support has always guided Roy, and it was her husband, and ultimately becoming a mother, that made her want to pick up a skateboard and try. When I first started talking to Sanjeev, skateboarding came up right away. He told me he sprained his ankle skateboarding and he couldn't come and meet me and that I should come and meet him. And I immediately asked him, are you a pro skater? 
I had no concept of adult skateboarding. And he said, I'm not a pro skater, I'm an adult skateboarder, I just like to skateboard. She just fell in love with it. Next thing you know, I get a text message of her dropping in on a quarter pipe <laughs> and, um, I, and, and like falling on her butt and laughing. And yeah, I think that was it, that hooked you. When we're sessioning, which is a bunch of us skating together, we just feed off of each other's energy and we push each other to try new tricks. We celebrate together and we also, we also push each other a little bit. Why not? Roy believes skateboarding has actually made her a better parent. Let's go! Yeah! I can do it! What's up? There's a lot of life lessons to be learned in skateboarding. I've watched my kids' confidence grow so much as they skateboard. And they also learn a little bit about perseverance. You're not going to get something right away. It's not gonna be handed to you. Sometimes I'm mad, sometimes I'm frustrated. Mama, you say I'm the drama queen. I am the drama queen. They see all the emotions that I go through and they see me get through it. And that's what they're, they're mimicking that behavior now. Sometimes people are at the skate park and they're a little bit nervous. And I always go to those people and say, you know, say, how are you doing? Do you need some help? And now they do the same thing too. And I just, I, it, just the fact that they have compassion and empathy and that they've learned that, it, it makes me so proud. It makes me so proud. That's parenting 101, I guess. People ask her, are your kids embarrassed of you starting this thing? And we're, and we're, we're not, we're not. We're like, we're really proud of her. Like, there's no reason to be embarrassed. Like, if you have, like, a super cool parent or a super cool mom, be proud of it. <laughs> as a 46-year-old woman who gets into a bowl and skates in a sari, I want people to know that you can do anything you want. Be kind to yourself and follow those dreams. Do that thing you thought was too late to do. Do the thing that makes you happy. Auntie believes in you. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? What are the issues that the party stands for? That seems to be the missing piece here. If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring is from, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes. This is the face of excitement. Uh, celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it! And good evening from New Orleans. There is breaking news. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring is from, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. Uh, celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it! Make the most of your day with... Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Turning obstacles into opportunities might seem daunting for some, but not for weightlifter Chris Rudin, who has dedicated his life to teaching others how to live without limitations. A lot of people know that I'm, I was born with a disability, but a lot of people don't know the story behind the glove and why I've kept it on for so long. I started wearing this glove in middle school. I was used to the looks, but it wasn't until I went to middle school that kids started making fun of me. So this is the first time I am 
taking my glove off in front of people. I've hidden from everyone else and myself, and I can't anymore. I really can't. I remember making that video, uploaded it to YouTube, I closed my laptop, and I just didn't look at it. I was like, I don't care what happens, I'm just, I'm just gonna avoid it. And I woke up to being on the front page of YouTube, on the front page of Reddit, and all over the internet, Washington Post picked it up, and just everyone ran with it. This is me. It's a part of me. It's something I have to learn to fully accept. And I guess you do too. My name is Chris Rudin, and I was born with two fingers on my left hand and a shorter left arm. I never even thought that there was other people like me. I accepted that I was different. And for a long time, I accepted that I was broken. I accepted that I was less than. I always told myself that I never needed to stop hiding to the point where I wouldn't leave my house if I couldn't find my glove. I've had to even text my dad. I'm like, hey, I need a glove. And he would go to the store to get me one because I wouldn't leave the house. I refuse. But I set a goal if I ever got a prosthetic arm, which is almost impossible to get, that I would take my glove off and I would show the world. Since my last post, I have been invited to be on a TV show hosted by The Rock. I never thought I would take my glove off and show people my disability. I'm here for every kid that's afraid of being different. Every kid that's afraid of the way they look or the way they are. I'm here to show that it's possible. And I hope every kid in America knows limitations are self-imposed. Great job. Thank you. To look back and go from the kid who was hiding, the kid who was ashamed to be in front of everyone, to being on magazine covers, being on billboards with The Rock, a guy who used to play with his action figures and speaking all around the world, making a book, breaking a world record and deadlifting over 650 pounds with one hand against non-disabled people. All of that is amazing, but every day I get to help someone have that light bulb moment of, hey, I'm more than my circumstance is the best feeling in the world. Super early this morning, but it's time to head to Nubability. Nubability is a nonprofit organization that teaches kids with limb differences how to play organized sports. I'm really excited to meet the kids, to see how the camp is. I never really had any of this growing up, so it'll be fun. How you doing? This is my first year as a coach at Nubability. When you think of the word overcomer, it's every single person in this room. What I really love about Nubability is there's archery, fishing, basketball, football, every sport you could imagine, even lifting weights. But more than just the sports, it's the opportunity to overcome any obstacle that this limb difference or amputation might present. Snag it. Oh, that's all right, that's all right, man. Good hustle. Good. Go, 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 go. go. Oh my god, I'm so glad I got to see you. Are you fishing? Yes. Yeah. Bonding with the next generation makes me feel impactful. It makes me feel like I'm serving some sort of higher purpose beyond the struggle that I have, but the struggles that everyone else faces. You can reel up the line a little bit. Come on, you gotta know we're gonna catch fish. Mr. Chris is awesome, kind, sweet, nice to others. Mr. Chris is one of my most favorite people in the world. Got Rudin! And the most funnest one I've ever met. Boom! Boom! That's a catfish. Good job. One more time. All the way down. Chest up, knees out. Up! Good job. Good job. I'm stretching. I was teaching kids strength and conditioning, but what I was really teaching them is unwavering confidence. Up. The ability to be resilient and the ability to adapt for any circumstance. The most fulfilling moment today was definitely watching this guy who was definitely taken aback by like everything. He deadlifted for the first time in his life and he was emotional. He was definitely emotional and it, it got me to watch a kid go from being timid to confident. You just did four different workouts in two seconds. That was cool. I love that light bulb moment that took me 17 years to happen. It takes them a few minutes. Look at you doing pull-ups. It's important not to hide who you are because in hiding, you'll never discover who you actually are. All you will be is a carbon copy of everyone else. And the world has enough other people and the world doesn't have any of you. 
Good job. So why rob the world and the next generation of the potential and the reach and the impact that you can be? By being yourself. Being seen makes me feel like a person who's not broken. And the biggest moment of feeling seen was when I looked at my mirror and I wasn't ashamed of what I saw anymore. The upside to my story is regardless of what life throws at you, there's always a way to make it to the top. And good evening from New Orleans, there is breaking news. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends in today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Oh, boom. That's your shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring has sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. <laughs> Celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it. Good morning. Welcome to Today. Start your day with us every morning. Get your daily dose of news on the go with the Today Podcast. <laughs> Boom. And stream today anytime you want. Today, all day. Every day. Wherever you are, today is there. Today on The Upside, we're shining a light on the ways sports uplift and inspire. Up next, we're going to introduce you to a young boxer who's doing just that, fighting to claim a place for women in a sport still dominated by men. I didn't think when I had started boxing that I was going to come this far. I didn't know I was going to grow this fast. This is Violet, the warrior princess Lopez. I would probably say I'm more of a warrior than a princess. A 13-year-old boxer from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, who's shaking up the world of youth boxing. People say boxing is not meant for girls. I want them to see me as someone who shows you that you can do the sport you love, even though it's a sport that people say is not meant for you. Violet was born with the heart of a fighter. She's our youngest female boxer ever to compete out of the United Community Center. And I taught her from scratch, you know, from a kid that didn't know nothing. One day I was at home and my dad came home from work and he was like, your cousins are gonna do boxing, do you wanna try it to see if you like it? They looked around, they trained a little bit and then as the weeks went on, she just got more and more into it. At just eight years old, Violet won her first fight. She was forced to wait two years for her next fight because there wasn't another female competitor in her age group. Early on in her career, she was always down on herself because she never knew when she was going to get a fight. Being a female in boxing and then being an eight-year-old female, there's not many eight-year-old females that want to get punched in the face. For two years, she just trained. They would have show fights here and all the boys are fighting, but she wasn't. She was just watching from the stands. She started to kind of think if it was for her because she didn't feel like there was enough room for females in boxing just because there was no opportunities for them. I think that she realizes now that it's just part of the sport for female boxers. That's the last round, okay? 20 seconds. Not being able to get a fight and her crying because she wanted to fight. That's just as bad as losing. But Violet didn't let that stop her. By 12 years old, she was the top-ranked amateur boxer in the country in her division, winning gold at the Junior Olympics and five national championships. I want everyone to know that I worked really hard to get to where I am right now, and it's not always easy. One of Violet's biggest challenges is outside the ring, fighting the stereotypes that are familiar to many female athletes. Their biggest challenge is the fact that they are a female and not a male. People just assuming that they have it easier, people thinking that the training may be different for them, not as hard, they don't have to do as much. To see her cry in her bedroom, to say that my daughter wouldn't have national championships if she were a boy because it'd be so much harder and like that's real boxing is just crap. <laughs>
Nonetheless, Violet persisted. Leading up to Lake Charles, I thought we had a really good camp. You know, she knew she had to step it up and she had to fight harder, prepare harder. Violet persevered. She, she outboxed them. She did what she had to do. I'm really happy. I'm glad that I got another win in my book. Violet was poised to have her best season ever in 2020. 2020 was going to be the year like that I just skyrocketed. But no, the coronavirus came along. It impacted me so much. I had to take off a year of showing people what I can do and who I want to be and what I want to change for boxing. Violet's gym closed in March of 2020, and she had three of her upcoming tournaments canceled because of the pandemic. Her next national tournament was set for March 2021. I'm looking forward to fighting because I haven't fought in all. It's going to be a whole year once that time comes. Not having fought in a while, it is going to be a little more difficult because I'm going to have to like get back into the groove of things. I just always tell her to continue to be her and work as hard as she can, and that'll that'll just be enough to always know what you want, continue to be who you are, and just do the best that you can. We can't always expect you to win and be perfect. Violet finished third in the Youth National Championships. After that one loss, Violet's national ranking dropped from first to third. I think I needed that loss. That was my first loss in a long time. I got to work harder because I want to get back to the number one spot because that's where I should be. I'm graduating eighth grade, so I'm going to become a high schooler in a few months. My birthday is coming up too, so I'll be 14. I'm beyond proud. I'm beyond proud. I, there, I, there's not a word for what we've accomplished and for what we've done together. I, I just don't feel like people can take that away from me. In July, Violet's home gym reopened and she earned a bronze medal at the 2021 Junior Olympics in Lubbock, Texas. Next up, she's aiming for that number one ranking. My goal is to get my number one spot back because that's what I want, period. <laughs> <laughs> That's it for us on the upside. Power of sports. Hope you walk away inspired by the incredible people and stories that we showcased today, proving that you don't have to be an elite athlete to experience the life changing power of sports. Oh, hello, you beautiful people. You look so good. We love that you're tuning into our favorite streaming channel. It's Today All Day. I know. I was just telling the crew because they're all chit-chatting over there. Yeah. It's time for Today All Day, you guys. It's a big deal. Get excited. Oh, they're so excited. <laughs> um, we're halfway through the week. Yep. We're here in the studio. You're watching our digital yeah. show. Did you know that? Today in 30, and we've got another packed half hour for you. All right, first we're going to start off with a report from Richard Engel in Afghanistan. He's got the very latest on that scramble to get Americans and American allies out of that country. And then just weeks before her liftoff, we talked to a member of the first all-civilian space mission, Haley Arsenault. She conquered cancer at a young age. Well, she's getting ready to make history. Plus, wait until you see what happened when a few of us took over a kid's summer camp Thankfully, just for one day. And it's Wednesday, so in the fourth hour, it's Trends Trends Day Wednesday. 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 It's Trends Day Wednesday. We're going to break down all the hot topics for you. So let's hit play because it's time for... Do you remember when it was Wines Day Wednesday? Yeah, I liked Wines Day. I missed the wine. All right. Okay. Today in 30. Today in 30. <laughs> We'll start in Kabul with NBC's Richard Engel. Richard, good morning. Uh, good morning, Savannah. A surprising admission from the Taliban, one of their top leaders just today telling NBC News that even they were surprised that Kabul fell so quickly, that they didn't have the resources in place to take the city, but they took the city nonetheless. And here from this very base, the evacuation of Americans and American contractors and foreign contractors is now moving along very quickly. We made it onto the military side of Kabul airport, the last place in Afghanistan where the American flag still flies. Here is where the United States is overseeing an elaborate evacuation from the country. This has become effectively the last U.S. military base in Afghanistan, the last presence of American troops in this country after 20 years. And they're only focused on one thing, wrapping it up. The evacuation is mostly focused on airlifting Americans and other foreign nationals and Afghans who managed to obtain visas and who are happy to leave. Peace. Two days ago, it looked very different here. This side of the airport was overwhelmed 
when thousands of Afghans stormed the runways, cramming onto commercial planes, which got so full, pilots wouldn't take off. They scrambled to board American military transport jets, clinging on as they taxied for takeoff. Afghan media reports several people have fallen to their deaths as they tried to hold on to aircraft in flight. I spoke to a group of Afghans who all worked on this base for years, earning around $500 a month to be cleaners and cooks. Not one has obtained a visa. And what would happen to you or you or you if you go back home? Are you worried for your safety? Absolutely. You know, uh, before a few days now, Taliban searching the homes. If you go outside, of course they will kill us. 